CBS Sports, your 2018 home of March Madness. The Masters, the PGA Championship, PGA Tour, SEC Football, the NFL, and February 3rd, Super Bowl 53. The sweet spot, 14 years old, the future glimmering in your eyes, and the future is bright. Perfect Game, in its never-ending effort to grow the game, has assembled the finest 14 new baseball players in North America in a celebration of skill, commitment, and determination at such a key developmental age. It's the third annual Perfect Game Select Baseball Festival at JetBlue Park in beautiful Fort Myers, Lee County, Florida. If you're curious what the big leagues will look like in a decade, well, we're about to drop it on you. On the beautiful west coast of Florida, a spectacular destination for these great athletes all week long. The Perfect Game Select Baseball Festival, and they have great leaders, longtime major leaguers, Tom Flash, Gordon, and Scott Erickson. It's Team Gordon, it's Team Erickson. These are some of the best 14 new players, freshmen and sophomores in high school in the nation. Who is Perfect Game? The development of the athlete, the amateur athlete, the largest independent scouting department in all of baseball, nearly 1,200 and MLB alumni, nearly 12,000 players drafted since Perfect Game was founded by Jerry Ford in 1995. Hi there, folks, and welcome back to the ballpark. Certainly glad to have you with us. This is National Cross Checker for Perfect Game, Jeremy Brown. My name is Darren Sutton. Our insights from the big leagues, nearly 1,400 hits in the major leagues, Dimitri Young. Dimitri, let me start with you because you've spent the week not only learning about these kids to do this job, but you've been coaching and you've been teaching. I'm going to give you two. You take two. Tamar Johnson, Brady House, both infielders, both different guys. Break them down. Well, for Tamara Johnson, lightning quick hands. You know, we called him Robinson Cano at Elite Development Invitational. Rangy second baseman. You know, he's a fiery player, in-your-face kind of player, and the kind of guy that you want on your team. And then there's Brady House, the home run derby winner and also an intimidating feature. He comes back from last year as a returnee. He has tremendous power to all fields, uh, awesome glove, and you know what? He plays with a smile on his face. Jeremy Brown, let's start on the mound with you. Perfect Games Pitcher of the Year was Dylan Lesko. Uh, he, he is where you will start. Absolutely. Yeah, Dylan, I mean, he comes from Georgia, and when he first came to our stuff, he's a 2022 catcher. Now you look at him, he's a Pitcher of the Year within a year of making the full transition. Already up to 88. We're going to see him early on in this game. The slider's coming along. Everything you want out of a young pitching prospect is what Dylan Lesko embodies on the mound. Ryan Clifford is the next name. He is. He's a six foot two, 195 pound left handed hitting outfielder. He's got the bat speed. He's got the size. He's got the power. He's got the strong arm out in right field. The profile's there. He's been on the national stage, and college coaches already know his name. The fourth member of our broadcast team is Danny Wexelman, representing Major League Baseball, with the story of an athlete not from the United States, instead, a journey from the Dominican Republic. Armando Cruz remembers when he was four years old, he told his dad, I want to play baseball, and he hasn't slowed down since. He's extremely proud to be from the Dominican Republic, and he's got some major league support down there. Javier Baseball Academy was the very first created in Santo Domingo, and guys like Nomar Mazzaro and Ahmed Rosario have come through there, two guys who have passed on their major league advice to Armando. Bueno, yo van... Uh, salieron de allá de la academia de la Javier donde yo practico y son muchachos muy humildes ayudan dan consejos para que echen para adelante y humildante todo the main uh, advice of the gaming is to be uh, his himself don't don't be over the other guys so just follow his dream being by himself being, being himself I asked Armando why he loves the game of baseball so much. He said everything he has in life is because of baseball. It doesn't get much more powerful than that, guys, does it? Incredibly powerful, powerful stories, talented athletes. We will introduce you to all 44. It's the 14U Perfect Game Select Baseball Festival.
The Perfect Game 14U Select Festival on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Perfect Game. For nearly a quarter century, PG has provided the platform for the game's most passionate and talented players to chase their dreams and reach their true potential. And by Diamond Kinetics, proud sponsor of Perfect Game. Elevate your game with revolutionary swing tracker and pitch tracker technology. Diamond Kinetics, engineering better players. Ben Lemon Fenway with the 0-2 upcoming. your position, uh, infield and outfield. Go through this with some energy, guys. Have some fun with this. Make sure you get the most out of it. Uh, don't feel the like, inside, uh, so Flash you know, Gordon all throughout the week. What a key moment for him. His team will swing the bat first. Tom Gordon, so much fun to be around all throughout the week. He's very involved with regard to perfect game and these athletes, but also through Major League Baseball, through the Elite Development Invitational, through Major League Baseball's Breakthrough Series. And of course, Tom Gordon doing amazing things. There's an interesting look, by the way, defensively. If you'll take a peek out at third base, we're not quite sure if this will be allowed here because the, the partnership with Rawlings is great, but look at that coverage that you will get over there at third base. That That's almost too much. That's, that's yeah. Sal Stewart, by the way, who is the perfect game national player of the year. At some point, Dimitri, they may have to make a call on this glove. <laughs> oh, that thing is an absolute pancake right there. He's just playing around with that. But um, as you see, the guy that has the most personality on Erickson's team is the one that's playing with the glove. So he still has the glove, and we're about to play. So this is a storyline that we need to follow here right out of the gates. <laughs> Uh, you guys might be laughing, but with regard to someone who sticks to the books, I'm taking this seriously. Sal has the big gold glove here. And away we will start. The National Player of the Year representing, well, Rawlings now. Dimitri, I think with that glove in the big leagues, you're a gold glover multiple times. Well, you better be a gold glover with that size glove. So, Jeremy, how did you... Um how'd you rank this guy, especially for fielding with that kind of glove? You gotta have confidence to go out there. I was shagging with it. It's a 30 pound glove. So it's gonna <laughs> gonna limit your foot speed here. You got tomorrow in the bases. Hopefully he doesn't drop down a bunt. Well if he drops down a bunt we might see himself catch the catch himself in that big glove. All right, so away we go. Tamar Johnson leads things off with that big glove at third. The first pitch hey. sails high. 1-0 and oh, the count to Johnson. He's actually sticking with the glove. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure here if, in fact, he will. Let's see. He's going to make a change. Okay. He, he's made the change. All right. Wow. It, his mates are giving him a hard time. Yeah, I thought I heard some booing going on. <laughs> yeah, that was from the dugout. Let's play for real, folks. Good bit. Like it. Pitches high up and out of the zone. 89 miles an hour. That's a talented left arm. We're going to introduce you to all of these pitchers as they go to work. This is Blaze Grove, the left-handed hurler. Grove is out of Summit Point in West Virginia as he misses up and away, does Blaze Grove. He's a South Carolina commit, and we have seen him at 20 different perfect game events, Jeremy. Yeah, you're seeing Blaze right here. As you said, he's from West Virginia. He's already up to 90, opening it up 6'5", 235. Left-handed, has a velocity. There's a lot to like here with Blaze. And he's dealing with Tamar Johnson, Dimitri, number 42 on the back of that jersey. Team Halo is travel team out of Atlanta, Georgia. Benjamin E. May High School, a gifted, gifted athlete. And like I mentioned earlier, quick hands, and uh, he's very patient up there at the plate, and he hadn't seen anything for him to hit, and obviously he's going to first base. But I also wanted to mention about his brother a little bit later. We'll do that in a bit. Let's go to Danny Wexelman. She's walking to home plate with Andrew Jones. Thanks, guys. Drew, you've got Mike Trout on your bat. You're the Offensive Player of the Year for Perfect Game. Are you going to show us some power tonight? Uh, hopefully I can get the ball in play and stay up the middle and get tomorrow to second base or third. Seven. So you've got a guy on first. Now what's your approach as we walk up? Um, stay up the middle, try to hit it back at the pitcher, and hopefully move tomorrow. Drew, thank you. 
Thank you, Danny. Good stuff. That is Andrew Jones. The name is very familiar. He does wear dad's number 25, but he does things his own way. 643 DP is his travel team out of Swanee, Georgia. Wesleyan High School, Andrew Drew Jones. Fastball sails high from Grove, just trying to find that arm slot. Tell us a little bit about Andrew. Drew, I mean, he's a center fielder like his father. He's got the loose rangey actions. You're going to watch him first step. He's going to take off. He's going to be under the ball more often than not, whether it's in the gaps. And you may even see him drift all the way over to left field, call off his left fielder for a fly ball. Tall, lean, lanky, very athletic. 92 miles an hour. But it sails to the backstop. So the, the velocity is there. The arm strength is there. But I think I think Dimitri Blaze Grove may be living in the moment and putting a little pressure on himself. Yeah, you know, um, for the first time being in front of a camera, sometimes you can get a little, you know, a little camera shy. You know, the light, you're playing with the lights on. You have people in the stands. And this is kind of a big deal right now. So all he needs to do is just calm down and, and just live in the situation. See if he can get comfortable, get that arm out front. And that's what happens. His body is leaving his arm behind. And so Grove just trying to get comfortable out there. Great high school basketball player as well. Seventh and eighth grade early on prior to this year. Averaged 20 points a game. Two times was his MVP. There's a pretty there fastball over the inside corner. 91 miles an hour. An easy 91, Dimitri. Man, they, they build them big and strong, man. They, they, I love to try and go and hit against this right now. I don't think I'll be too successful at my age. Right back to work with a belt-high fastball. Three and two. So you're looking at Blaze, who opened up seven pitches for balls. Then he comes back. When he you think he's searching for strikes, he's still sitting 90. Out of the stretch, left-handed at 14 years old. McDonough School is where he attends. Matt Tineski is his high school baseball coach. And that one is high, up and away. Back-to-back -back walks to start things. But flashes of brilliance. 92 from the left side, as we said, already a commit to South Carolina. Ryan Clifford now with his opportunity as he walks toward the plate. He's had a great summer playing for the Canes national team and also for Team USA winning a gold medal this summer. He's got a couple of his 15U gold teammates as well on this squad. Out of Raleigh, North Carolina. So this is a player you, you see right here, elite offensive skill set. He's already been playing up two years with the Canes national team, and he already is an established presence on the national circuit. Fastball sails high, 1-0 and the count. You know, I was watching this swing yesterday during BP, and the funny thing about it was when he followed through, he follows through with two hands occasionally, and the bat hits the back, the back of his back. I mean, he just... It's a real hard swing. You can just hear the thump, thump. Just the violence of it. Yes, it's Whipping like, jeez. It. I'd like to know who his hitting coach is. Mm -hmm. He's teaching him well. We were asking him about that, asking how, how does your back feel after he goes, I've done it for so long, it doesn't even impact me anymore. Does he have, like, welts, or does he have, like, a, <laughs> <laughs> some raised skin? Permanent rolling <laughs> stamp on his back. Clifford. In a perfect game event earlier this year, a Super 25 event in four games, had three home runs in four games in a perfect game event. Struggles continue. Grove says, uh, I'll try a new baseball. Maybe the touch on that one will get me comfortable. Blash is passionate. Don't think he's not taking this seriously. He's been teaching and getting to know these kids all week long. Scott Erickson in that other dugout, longtime Major League pitcher. Right down the middle, three and one. Right now, this three one count, and the pitcher hadn't exactly found his zone right now, but a guy like Clifford, pretty sure he's going to let it rip. He does. Fastball in on the hands, three and two, the count to the son of Amy and John, Ryan Clifford, out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Outstanding in the classroom, Clifford, as he deals with Grove on the mound. All A's, all through middle school. We told you about the one gold that he won with Team USA. He's actually earned gold twice as a Team USA roster member. Runner takes off. Third walk in the inning. And so... We just heard a horn, and in the state of Florida, 
Lightning is in the area. That's what that means. So a lightning delay in the area, and we will stay here, certainly. We've been with these athletes all week long. And take a brief break. You don't go anywhere, though. Players from all over the country, and again, a unique gathering of players. Players like Justin Colon from Puerto Rico, his story, and we'll see his spikes when he gets into the game, having them signed by young patients at the local children's hospital when making the visit. By the way, these athletes were encouraged, learn how to sign your autograph and sign it well, and we're gonna celebrate these 14 new athletes, and at some point, hopefully those uh, those signatures will be worth something. This is Hayden Murphy on to the bump for Team Erickson. Team Gordon had the bases loaded. Tamar Johnson, Andrew Jones, Ryan Clifford, you heard from, from Brady House, but let's get to know Hayden Murphy as he goes to work. Team Elite in Chula, Georgia. Melissa and Chris, mom and dad, both really good athletes. Dad playing tennis at Emory, mom softball at Valdosta, Tift Area Academy, an outstanding student in the classroom with a 4-0. Tell us more stuff once. You just take a look out here at Hayden and where his strike foot's landing, how cross body he is. He hides the ball really well. There's a lot of deception coming out of his hand. The velocity's easy. You see on your screen, easy easy velocity and a two-way. He's listed as a primary shortstop on his profile, and he brings that athleticism to the mound. And he's an inspiration to those around him because Hayden has had to manage diabetes. He's a type 1 diabetic, and uh, so the preparation probably equally or more so important for him. And uh, so, so a, wonderful, a wonderful round of applause from wherever you watch for what Hayden Murphy's overcome. Oh, definitely. I'm type 1 myself, so I know he had to check his blood sugar probably about 20 minutes before he got out there on the mound and make sure he's at a level that he doesn't crash or anything like that. So he's probably around 150 to 180 with blood sugar. So when he exerts his energy, he'll be down to normal. All and right. No oh, and normal being around 70 to 120. <laughs> we're about to play baseball. We're, we're glad you've been patient. Those of you that are passionate about the sport have found us once again. We're at JetBlue Park, the spring training home of the Boston Red Sox. By the way, the Gordon and Erickson reminder, that's Flash Gordon, Tom Flash Gordon, longtime major leaguer, manager of the team in the first base dugout, Scott Erickson, great major league starting pitcher, manager of the team in black and gold in that third base dugout. This is Brady House, team elite his travel team out of Winder, Georgia. Camera right there. Chopped on the ground, out towards short, ranging to his left, getting it out of his glove, the throw skips away. One run will score, quite possibly another on the back side. Two runs come around, really good pitch to start things. At the bottom hand of the bat, Murphy made his pitch, certainly Stewart just couldn't come up with that one. Sal Stewart charging from third base. Not an easy play. No, and the, with the slick grass, you're going to have to take that extra step and with the speed of house coming down the line. It's a bang-bang play, and Sal did all he could with the ball just being so wet as it is. And you know, House took a tremendous swing. He was not going for that little infield single right there. He was trying to hit home run number two out of this this place, but uh, he hustled down the line, and, and he made things happen. Jared Jones, his opportunity. Good sink on that fastball, diving down below the hands of the young man who plays for the East Cobb program out of Marietta, Georgia. Walton High School in the Atlanta area. And a really, really good student. Over the outside corner. One ball and one strike to count to Jared Jones. Mom is Michelle, dad is George. There's a little bit more on Jared. Oh, uh, he's, a, he's a big time football player, big time baseball player, obviously. Starts at Walton High School. Big, big time football program, as we said. Came right in off the plane, went right to the home run derby challenge, started knocking down the fence of the field one replica, and here he is digging into the box. Yeah, I'm pretty glad that you explained everything that he came from a football game because when he showed up in the box, I thought it was like a college freshman that stepped into it. I was like, who is this guy right here? Oh, it's Jared Jones. Uh, Where did he come from? Oh, he had a football game last night. I said, for who, the University of Georgia? <laughs> Boy, he had some big moments this summer. Certainly, obviously, the football story, a big part of the journey. And there are elite 19 grads that are high draft pick potential guys that are outstanding football commits as well. Jones a couple of years behind all of them. But he had some big moments as a baseball player this summer. As that one hits the outside corner, Jones goes down on strikes. 
But as you get to know these kids, talk to Jared a little bit. Hey, football, baseball, what's your future? He goes, I want to love baseball. So that's always good to hear from our side of things. Yes, definitely. And that pitch was a little bit outside. I thought that was a ball. Nathan Fink with his opportunity now. Fink with the Canes national team, his travel team out of Charlottesville, Virginia. He's to honor his grandfather who passed this past January. Doing some painting, good pitch. Everything low, everything with good dive to it, and it's easy for Murphy. Good sink to it, yeah, that's what comes, it's not that long of a stride for how big he is, so he's really able to work on top of the ball, pound it down, and get that late sink, so you might get a couple ground balls here. On the outside corner, no balls and two strikes to count to Nathan Fink, who, by the way, can play some hockey and play it very, very well. I'm, I'm watching how Murphy is pitching. He has a lot of run on his ball, and lucky for me, I was a switch hitter. I would be hitting on the left side, but the advice I would be giving to the right-handed hitters is to try and see that ball middle away and try and hit that ball to the right center field side, catch it before that ball tails into the, the meat of your bat or actually a tail into the to your hands. Good sinking fastball over the inside corner. That's strike three to Nathan Fink. And here is Justin Colon. Those spikes all colored up by the young patients at Galasano Children's Hospital. That was a very important thing that he wanted to do. Honoring Bryce Harper, who's a former Perfect Game alum. Handed the pen out, let the youngster draw all over those spikes. And so Colon representing FDB Florida Travel Ball, his program, Puerto Rican native, and a Florida International University commit. And with the, the cleats, you, you speak to, a, it speaks to his character as a kid. And then if you zoom in on the bat too, he's got a couple more messages for family. There's a family member back home battling cancer. He's got his written on his bat. He came down this morning and showed it to me as well. And the one thing I love about this kid, he's a switch hitter. And I, I talked to the three switch, hit, uh, the three switch hitters, Justin Colon, uh, Luke Davis, and also Ethan Anderson. And I told them about having an identity on each side of the plate because one side is your natural side. You're always going to have that strength on your natural side. So your unnatural side, and I say you treat it like a little brother. You know, it's tender, loving care, a lot of work that you have to do with it. And it's real hard to maintain it when you try and focus in on staying on your natural side. So for switch hitters, you have to take that leap of faith and do the work on the left side because it'll eventually a click for you. To the bag, playing it belt high. Fine job over there, gobbling it up by Mr. Hussey out of West Virginia. Honoring those young men and women that are on a battle they just soon not be in. He had them sign their spikes, Justin Colon. From north of the border, Loretto Siniscalci. He is ready to go in this game. Danny Wexelman, just a quick update on who he is. Loretto, really quick as you get this ball back. Uh, I saw Flash Gordon talking to you. What did he say to you in the dugout? Uh, he told me to have fun out there, throw strikes, compete, man. I got the best defense out here. And really quickly, can you show us the pitches you're going to be working with tonight and tell us what they are? Can you show the camera here? Uh, four seam fastball. I throw change up. Mm -hmm. Curveball and a slider. All right, Laredo, good luck. Thank you. Guys. So Laredo Siniscalci is ready to roll. The talented right-handed pitcher from north of the border. He is Canadian born and raised, and there's been such a great history over the last couple of years of athletics in Canada, baseball in Canada. The Langley Blaze, his travel team. From Burnaby, Canada, the right-hander ready to roll. Outfield, infield, straight up, and away we go. First pitch, fastball just off the plate to Elijah Green out of Windermere, Florida. TNXL Academy, where Brian Martinez is one of his main men. Sinascalchi, player we got to see at the 14U National, but it's also a name we've known about. Back in 2016, he was with the Canadian Little League team. He got on the mound against the Japanese team and absolutely dominated them. Japan was one of the top teams there. He comes out, he does it with the bat, he does it with the arm. Now we get to see him a couple years later as a rising sophomore doing his thing on the Big Diamond. What a great story, Little League World Series hero and journeying to this event and the journeys will continue. 
Good Two. fastball. Lively Dimitri over the inside corner. Yeah, I was watching that ball. It just cut across the plate, man. Uh, it's got a nice velo. And I, li uh, I like the way that he sets up kind of looks like, um, remember Chad Billingsley with the Los Angeles Dodgers about a decade ago. Of course, I'm dating myself. But same kind of action, especially on that curveball right there against Elijah Green. Great breaking ball. Down goes Elijah Green. So fastball in, breaking ball down. Had his sights set on that pitch, certainly. And it leads way now to Sal Stewart. We've had a little fun with Sal early on, but bottom line, this is a talented, talented hitter. Stewart, USC lead his travel team out of Miami, Florida. Westminster Christian School. And a good student, a really good student. 4.2 GPA all through middle school. A little bit more on that scouting report, yeah, Jeremy. There's a reason he's a 14U player of the year. Every time we saw him, regardless of the event, it was barrel, 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 pull side, middle field, opposite field. He knows what he's doing. He has the approach Dimitri's been talking about. He's not afraid to go away. He knows when a breaking ball is coming. He reads the situation, and odds are we'll find, see him find a barrel here. Good fastball, one and one the count. I love that swing right there that he took right there. That was a man's hack. Something that Sim Scalci does so well, I was listening to Flash talk to Irv Harder last night after our banquet dinner, tunneling the pitches at the same slot, fastball, curveball, all coming over that overhand <laughs> slot. Just makes that much more deception for a batter. Boy, I like that one right there. That was beautiful. One and two the count. And you know, early in the game when, well, about three hours ago when Sal was at third base with the big glove, that's that's some of the stuff that I look for in a ball player if I was to build my own team. Oh, fastball, down he goes away. Swings right through it. Since Galchi's since not wasting any time here. Good afternoon. Good night. Yeah, that's a setup that is, pitch. That curveball is absolutely nasty. Now he goes away. Lands it, breaking ball, fastball. Kept the hitter off balance. Fastball high and inside to Jace LaViolette out of Katy, Texas. Ober D. Temple High School. I apologize, Ober D. Tompkins High School in the Katy, Texas area. Good fastball runs away on a night like tonight. Jace wants to honor Josh Markle who was his youth coach until he was 13 years old. He said he taught me so much about baseball, but he also taught me how to grow up and how to learn how to be a gentleman and how to be a man on a night like tonight. I'd like to honor him. You look at Jace, big, strong, physical from Texas, as you'd expect. And it's, that's what translates into his game. He's a big left-handed power bat. Obviously, he's starting in the three-hole here for Erickson. There's a reason for that. The power is big. The power plays. You know, I watched him take batting practice yesterday, and the bat looked incredibly small in his hand. <laughs> so I asked him, I was like, Jace, what size bat is that you have in your hand? Oh, it's a size 33. So it looked like it's about time for you to move up to a size 34. And he said that, you know, I was swinging with a lot of success this summer with a size 33. I said, well, don't change your thing then <laughs> until it's time. And doesn't he wear a size 16 shoe? Yeah. <laughs> As a 14-year-old. I can imagine that grocery bill. Two and two the count on Jace LaViolette. And seeing how tall and how long he is, from what I'm looking at, he is really on top of the plate and with that long wingspan of his, he's gonna eventually, when he gets older, get off the plate a little bit. Outside corner, got him looking. That is an inning. He was kind enough to introduce us before the inning started on the field to who he is as a pitcher. He stopped talking and he went to work. Elijah Green with a breaking ball. Sal Stewart dug in. He dealt with a fastball. And then over the outside corner with some run. Good evening, sir. We'll turn your bed down for you. Dimitri, you were talking earlier about having fun, being a good teammate. You were mentioning Sal Stewart being willing to put the big gold glove on. That brought us to some of the things you look for in a player. Well, coaching high school baseball, you know, you can only get what you get. But if I was to draft a team of high school players, I would love the guys that have their own identity up there. They believe in who they are and who they are. Who they can be. They listen. That means they're coachable. And if you give them any advice, they're not going to look at you crazy like you don't know what you're talking about. 
headstrong is when you get that information, you're focused and you're driven on doing the job at hand. And then, of course, you got to have fun doing this <laughs> game. You can't be too serious because when you're too serious about it, you're not going to enjoy yourself, and thus the game is not fun. And being a good teammate, I mean, we can talk about that a lot later. Calvert Clark leads things off. He goes to work against Matthew Porches, the right arm out of Southern California, down in Orange County, Ladera Ranch, California. Monica's dad, Gabriel, or Monica's mom, Gabriel, is dad as he serves that one right by Calvert Clark. Yeah, you got Porches here, big, strong, right-handed pitcher. You see the lower arm slot kind of comes out slinging the rock at the, right to the batter. It makes for a very uncomfortable at bat. You got mid 80s, mid upper 80s right here out of the hand. It's easy. The delivery is only going to continue to refine as he develops. So, three and one the count to Clark. Clark from Charlotte, North Carolina. Coach Simeon's his head coach at Charlotte Christian High School. Good sinking fastball just below the knee. So uh -oh. he'll grab that bat and go do it again. <laughs> Yeah, Porches has a nice action on this ball. It has a lot of zip on it, light, light, uh, late, late movement, and it's real, it's lightning quick. It, it it moves hard, and as a hitter, you gotta find a point where you want to hit that ball because, as you see, it's a it's a wider zone due to the fact that this game has been delayed for a few hours. So, we gotta get this game in. So, guys, be ready to swing. Three, two, just off the plate. That one is high. And it's a walk, so Calvert Clark is on. Dealing with Matthew Porches. Santa Margarita Catholic School in Orange County. And he has had some really good moments. Some really good moments. Justin Colon runs it first. Tucker Toman receives his opportunity. Out of Columbia, South Carolina. Dad Jim has been a mainstay in college baseball for, gosh, about a generation plus. Now the head coach of Middle Tennessee State. With Tucker here, you're getting a really good left-handed bat. He's listed as a switch hitter, but as you can see, he hit 451 this summer. Majority of his reps came from the left side. There's some timing triggers to his swing, but it's really fluid. Just waited on that one, let the ball travel deep in his stance. Toman. Lifting that one foul. Mom is Ashley, dad is Jim, as we mentioned. Hammond High School. And I'm watching his grip, and he has a real nice grip. He has loose hands, and I was, the, when I was taking notes on all the guys taking batting practice on each side, that was the common denominator with each of these hitters. They all have loose hands out there at the plate, so they're able to get their hands in a great low position and able to explode through the ball kind of like what I was talking about in the demo about having a good grip on the bat. Fastball over the inside corner, locks him up. That good late sink sends Tolman back to the dugout. And so Lamar King, get to know Lamar King. Kane's national, his a travel team out of Rosedale, Maryland. King works behind the plate. Calvert Hall College, his school, as he takes strike one. Not only did his school, his classroom a place of domination as well a 3.8 GPA a little bit on the side of that one and it sinks down and away we got to see Lamar last sitting behind the plate handling Laredo and that, that's the biggest part of his game is his ability to receive he receives velocity he can stick runner takes off and the bag is swiped there he can stick the off-speed pitches he has the arm strength he has a lot of the check marks you look for in a young backstop Cologne with a stolen base. King had some big moments throughout the summer at the 14U Perfect Game World Series in four games at an on-base of over 500, 545. So it's just on constantly against some of the best 14U talent in the nation. At Lake Point, that great facility north of Atlanta, and playing for one of the better travel ball organizations. A lot of the other teams, they're going to come out with their best arms. So you're seeing them face the best arms, the best velocity throughout any given tournament. Breaking ball is high. Three and two the count. Perfect game select baseball festival. 
The most talented 14 U baseball players in North America gathered here at JetBlue Park, the spring training home of the Boston Red Sox. Got him with a baking ball, or down and away, he chases that one. See, Actually, it was a fastball with some cut to it. You see in Portraits just a really easy rhythmic delivery. The arm's working. It's a, it's a lower slot that's really giving it that late life that we're going to see right here. And, and what he's doing, he's, he's just attacking hitters right now with the fastball. We haven't seen many breaking balls out of him. He does have a curveball and a slider, so we'll see what we got here. Open stance, Ryan Ward, Southern Californian, takes a fastball that misses away. Coronado, California, the beautiful island just off of San Diego. Coronado High School, where he plays for Coach Morgan Cummins there. Runner takes off to third. Ball nearly trickled too far away, but it didn't, trying to get rid of it quickly. Davis from behind home plate. Ryan's one player we got to see at that 14 U West showcase earlier in the year. As you see Cologne here swipe a bag. But with Ward, we've been able to track him with his San Diego Stars organization throughout the summer. And now he comes here. He went to the 14 U National. Now he's here. And you see with his swing, he used to be a short linear stroke. Now he's beginning to leverage the ball a little more. He's getting a little stronger. And as he comes together, that swing's only going to continue to produce the backspin. And those line drives to the gaps are going to become deep shots. And where did he learn that from? I'd guess his father. His father, Kevin Ward, a former big league ball player with the San Diego Padres. He played in 91 and 92 alongside Tony Gwynn, Fred McGriff, Gary Sheffield. And, uh, you know, as a big league ball player, he's one of a little over 19,000. And the one thing that these young guys got to understand is once they get to the to the pro ranks, it doesn't matter if you're the number one prospect or like Mike Piazza, a late draftee. I'll tell you this right now, that is some special stuff from the Southern Californian out on the bump. Very heavy, good sink. Matthew Porches, get it done. Next Saturday, starting at noon Eastern, college football kicks off with Liberty battling Army, followed by these Navy midshipmen returning home to face the Memphis Tigers. And at 7.30, the Arkansas Razorbacks take on Colorado State right here on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. CBS Sports Network. Let's get it on down to Danny Wexelman, introducing us to some of the offensive players on the Erickson side. Thanks, Darren. I'm with Ethan Anderson. Ethan, your dad is a Navy SEAL, and yes. he loves to give you pep talks before the game. What did he say to you before this game? Uh, most of it's the same stuff. A lot of hydrate. I um, lose a lot of water during the games, but when it comes to batting, just head down, barrel through the zone, get your back hip through. And I hear that all the time. That's his go-to, and your team needs some base runners right now, and so what is going to be your focus at the plate to get on base? Well, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to get a fastball. A lot a lot of people are just trying to show off their velo, so I'm just trying to not expand my zone and just trying to not go too deep and get on base. Ethan, thank you. Thank you. Guys. Danny, good stuff. Calvert Clark has his opportunity to pitch. We've seen Calvert hit already. Clark on the mound, stands six foot four inches tall, good leverage. Check this out, by the way, a great chance to win the $10,000. Hey, I'll help you. Wonderful, perfect game, fun event there. And it's all sorts of great things that are going on. And Calvert Clark, as a pitcher, who is he? Calvert is going to come out, he's going to be mid-80s, but when you watch him throw a single pitch, you're going to be, that's really projectable. It's a long, loose, clean arm. He's got a feel for a breaking ball. It's still coming along, but he's also a real two-way potential player. He's a primary outfielder. He's got power in his bat. But on the mound, you're going to watch him, and you're going to say that could work long-term for sure. And so an opportunity to get to know Ethan Anderson. He was talking about his father and his sacrifice. We're certainly grateful for his sacrifice as a, as a Navy SEAL, and as a career member of the United States Navy, but he's lived in Hawaii. He's lived in Italy. He's lived in Portugal. He's lived in Tampa. All over the, all over the United States, all over the world, this young man. And you, of course, uh, a military young man, too, growing up. 
Yes, I've moved around my entire life. Born in Vicksburg, Mississippi, lived in Washington, D.C., and then when my dad transferred from the Army to the Navy, moved to Florida, so he went through basic training on to Beeville, Texas, where he learned how to fly. Then he went to Virginia Beach, Virginia, where he was on the USS Independence, went to Alabama, and later to California. So we moved around there my entire life. And the one thing that I learned was through baseball, you can meet a lot of friends. Yeah, that's what family has said. He's a Virginia commit, Ethan Anderson. Family has said it's been the great settling point. A ball field looks the same no matter where you are. And so for the Anderson family in this all-American level player, it's been a wonderful, peaceful place to be as Clark sails that one high. 1-0 one oh the count to Ethan Anderson. Anderson, big time strength either side of the plate. It's going to play to both fields. And last fall, he became the first 2022 commit to, as he committed to Virginia, fall of right going into his freshman or er, eighth grade year, excuse me, in-state commit. Makes sense. Both pro, both sides wanted him, wanted one another, and here we are today. 2-0 falls off the mound a little bit. Lets that one sail high and inside. Two balls and one strike the count to Ethan Anderson. Yeah, I had a chance to talk to Ethan Anderson while he was taking batting practice. And of course, we have a lot of things in common with the parent being in the military, moving around a lot, and also being a switch hitter. And nice patience that he had up there. But we talked about, you know, his approach on the right and the left side. And, and I was like, you know, you keep doing it. and. Just keep working the unnatural side a lot harder so it'll be even with your natural side. There are keys to switch hitting, and I know you, of course, did it very well. What are some of your keys? And a lot of these hitters back out of the concept and some stick with it. Well, the ones that stick with it are the ones that understand that they got to put a lot of work on that unnatural side due to the fact that it's unnatural. You're used to hitting on one side, now you're going to the other side. And it's one thing to hit in the cage, but going out there into a ball a ball game and seeing live pitching that's a whole nother ball of wax grand hussey has had a heck of a summer it's been almost tough for him he will tell us to keep up with because things went very very well at a perfect game event the 15 wwba at lake point and in 30 plate appearances he got on a ton he homered he had a 400 on base percentage this time it's tied up Little backhanded flip. They did get the lead runner. That was a fine play in the middle of the infield. Cruz with a very quick flip, turning it over to the other side. The talented middle infielder. We've enjoyed watching him work. That's Armando Cruz starting this one. Watch how quickly he goes in his hand, in his glove, out of his hand. And look at that arm that Justin Colon showed off, almost getting the runner at first. Cruz, Dominican Republic out of Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. Ooh, that one high and tight, got the bottom of the bat, and there's no way, even if it did get Lorenzo Carrier, he's not looking to go anywhere. He wants to hit. Lorenzo Carrier out of Bear, Delaware, stands six feet, four inches tall. He's every bit of six four. First time we've had anybody from Delaware come down to the game. He's not going to pitch in this game, but we have seen him up to 90. He's a primary outfielder. The swing really works. It, for, for his length and his size, it's a really compact swing. No problem using the opposite field. No balls and two strikes to count on Lorenzo Carrier. Keystone War Eagles, his travel team. Varsity basketball player in high school as well. I mean, look at the size and the athleticism. He's proud to be representing Delaware, very proud. He's been talking up his home state a lot this week. Flash Gordon's team, Tom Flash Gordon's team leading it two to nothing. That's a nice breaking ball. And a nice job behind home plate, keeping it right there with him. That's an outstanding job, throwing his body in front of it, Lamar King. Yeah, this is what we were talking about. This is Lamar's specialty is behind the plate. He gets the big arms with the canes. He has no problem blocking balls in the dirt. He's going to he's gonna square the pitch up. He's not afraid to sacrifice the body. And you got to see the breaking ball from Calvert as well. And I wanted to talk from the other side, watching Carrier with the loose hands up there. When you're nice and patient and everything is nice and relaxed. See, uh, with that pitch that went in the dirt the last time, if you up there rushing and you have tight hands and stuff, you're going to be susceptible to swinging at that pitch. 
That bat with a little wag before it settles in, and that one runs inside. Spinning off of it is Clark just a little bit. Three and two the count. He's talking with himself right now. There were regional showcases at the 14U level this year. Places like Tumball, Texas, and Cartersville, Georgia at Lake Point, Compton, California, St. Charles, Illinois, West Palm Beach. That really started the momentum of finding more of these talented freshmen and sophomores in high school heading into their freshman or sophomore year. And it's a slate of six right now, but it's something we hope to expand on. We have the 14U main event coming up this December down here in Fort Myers. It's going to be the first time we have the event, but already the, the requests are coming in. We're really excited for it, and it's just going to kick it off that much sooner for the next age group, for the next year's worth, the next year's class of festival, select festival players. Third annual event. Maurice Hampton, who played in the first festival, was a perfect game All-American this year. Young man out of Tennessee who's an LSU football commit and baseball commit. He played in this game. It's starting to turn over. That 20 class is loaded with alums from the PG Select Festival, so two years from now. Yeah, so you're going to see next year, hopefully, a lot in Petco are going to be able to say they did both the festival and the All-American Classic. You have talent. You have. You look through the rankings, there's still a lot in the upper tier that are that, that it can lay claim to being a select festival, and you probably remember some of them from back in the day as well. Oh, yeah, the very first year, there was quite a few of them. And it's nice to see the turnover, as you say, making it to their senior year and still being involved in perfect games. So you put in the work, you're going to stay involved. Luke Davis has done just that. He's out of Garden Grove, California, Cypress High School. Davis is a catcher and is a USC commit, the University of Southern California. He's the youngest of four in his home. Luke, he just committed to Southern Cal the other last week, right before he came on your radio show. You see on the graphic there, switch hitter. Most of his reps come from the left side. I had seen him left-handed throughout the summer, looked really good, thought it was all natural. Talked to him this weekend, right-handed is really his natural side. He says he likes to work left-handed and he just keeps it simple. He doesn't try to do too much. Right-handed might have more power, as we saw with the home run derby. Left-handed, he, he doesn't try to get in his own head, he says, just get the barrel to the ball. And it's almost an identical swing from both sides of the plate. That it is. And he was the third switch hitter I talked to. And, you know, switch hitter to switch hitter, I told him I really like this swing. And he, he, he brings it. He's not up there trying to hit a little single in the hole. I mean, he's trying to, he means <laughs> business up there. He's trying to hit that ball in the gaps. And, and that's on both sides. And, of course, I told him about giving each side an identity. My right side, I was gorilla because I was standing on top of the plate and double dog dare you to throw me inside. And on the left side, I was Zorro because I would use all fields. I hit the ball from line to line on the line. Two and two the count on Davis. The rain earlier, this field took it all in on the playing surface, which is the key. Some of the areas around the dugout, not quite as much, but boy, this is a spectacular ballpark. And the way that it took the water on, and that water disappeared was almost as if you could have a commercial wrapped around it here at JetBlue Park. 2-2. Two -two. Just over through that breaking ball. It's high. 3-2 and two the count. The other part with Luke, we talk about his bat. He's also, he also has some of the best catch and throw skills behind the plate. This summer he was sub-2 with his pops. Big time arm strength. And we should see him later on in the game on the mound as well. Pretty close to the plate. Slightly open stance. Chased up and out of there. And Davis goes down on strikes for the second out of the inning. Opening the door for Renzo Gonzalez. Gonzalez out of Carolina and Puerto Rico. He has pitched very effectively at perfect game events. He's Alonso High School now. We say it a lot with players here with the two-way potential, but with Renzo... You see him as an arm, he's up to 87 from the left side, really good changeup, but you see him with the bat and it's really loose hands. So he goes to the collegiate level, Being if he goes to the next level, out of Alonzo to the collegiate level, you're going to see him as a two-way because you're getting two times the amount of player for one scholarship, and it's not a gimmick on either side. They're both legit side tools, so Renzo's definitely on the radar of college coaches. Good off-speed pitch just off the plate outside. King couldn't hold on to it. One and one the count. 
Now, I really love the approach of Gonzalez. I've been watching him the last couple of days. Even though I didn't get the throw to this group, I did get to stand behind the cage and watch his approach up there at the plate. And it's just a line drive stroke. He can, he can hit the ball in the gaps, and that power is definitely going to develop. And I'm going to keep commenting on the loose hands up there, and that's very key for any hitter to have up there. It shows that you're relaxed, you're patient, you're able to look at your pitch selections when you're up there hitting instead of being tense and I'm going to kill this ball and next thing you know, the ball's being blown by you. Good stuff. Look at those hands. That's what Dimitri's talking about, those batting gloves and those fingers almost as, you know, look at an old-fashioned popcorn machine with the popcorn popping in it. And that's what those fingers look like. This is what Dimitri's talking about. Nice and relaxed. This will give you a good indication before the pitch comes. And there they go. Yeah, just adjusting. Fingers popping up. Just helps with your rhythm, too. Three and two, the count. Very professional at bat right here. This young man looks like a professional hit. Renzo Gonzalez. Some of those genes, athletic genes, from mom Alexandra and dad Javier, both elite runners. Track and field stars. Dad, as a matter of fact, a runner for the Puerto Rican national team. So there is athleticism from mom and dad. Renzo, yeah, one of the other players that we got to see at the 14U National that ultimately got selected for the Select Fest out of that event. That's a good at bat. Very good at bat. Renzo is on. And so that loads up the bases. Team Erickson, Scott Erickson's team. Trying to fight their way back in in those black jerseys, and it's Manuel Beltre with an RBI chance. Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic, just over 14 years old. I mean, just turned 14 years old. Yeah, him and Beltre are two of the young. Or excuse me, him and Tamar Johnson are two of the youngest players. That one is crushed down the left field line, but it's foul. Ooh. Those hands. He might Those be little, hands. but he's got some juice in that bat. Yeah, he might. Yeah, well, look at the big leaguers now that are leading the league in homers outside J.D. Martinez. Everybody's under six feet. Don't let the size <laughs> fool you See? is what you Nailed said. It. <laughs> oh, and one the count to Manuel Beltre. That one stays high. Great story about the sacrifice of his family. Dad is Manuel as well. Raquel is mom. And... Just getting him up here as often as they can, standing just five feet nine inches tall. But look, there are times when he's done some great things. And this year's Super 25 13 U National Championship, he had a 1,200 OPS and 27 plate appearances. Just did big, big damage. Yeah, the bats for real, the gloves for real. We saw him at the 14 U Florida Showcase. Now we get to see him here. It's the culmination of all his work, hard work. He comes up to the States a lot to play. To the right side, lets it travel into his stance. 0 and 2, the count. Yeah, and the luxury of watching these young hitters take take batting practice is you get to see them if they're not trying to hit the ball over the the green monster. You see some of them that just use the entire field and and hit the ball where it's pitched, and he was one of them. To the right side, tried to dump that one in. Well, he's completely comfortable in his shoes down there, isn't he? Yeah. I mean, we got to see him against some upper 80s at that Florida showcase, and while some kids struggled with the velocity, Manuel was all over it. Two to nothing the score. Tom Flash Gordon's team on top. Beltre, as Jeremy was saying, has been quite active. This is the 25th time Perfect Game has been able to lay eyes on this athlete. One, two, breaking ball, good pitch, just inside. So we'll do it again. Big smile on Calvert's face. He thought he had that one. A uh, bit inside. A little that frame was, job by Lamar there at the end. That was the right call for this situation because we want to see him hit. Breaking ball, high. Now that one up for sure. The other one in. Hey, by the way, that foul ball, if you're into some of the advanced metrics, exit velocity of 95 miles an hour, that foul ball. The one that he leaned on and hit up over the roof, foul. See, when you had a pitcher throwing you back-to-back -back breaking balls, that means he has mad respect for you. The 3-2.
Fastball in on the hands, down and foul. The great at bat continues. First Renzo Gonzalez epic at bat. And now number one, Manuel Beltre, earning his stripes down there. Manuel, obviously from the Dominican, the players from the Dominican aren't eligible for the MLB draft, which means they can sign internationally free agents once they turn 16. July 2nd of 2020, you should see Manuel putting ink to paper with an MLB contract. Wow. The 3-2. He takes low. That one sinks out of there, and it's actually 3-2 now. We were just off one pitch, so the count is full. Three balls and two strikes to count. Runners will be going. Defense back. In and out of the catcher's mitt. Not a shy swing at all. Nope. Cal uh, Calvert's bringing his best. And Beltre's bringing his best. No trickery here. The Perfect Game Select Baseball Festival, a gathering of these elite 14 new athletes from North America. In Canada, from the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, the Bahamas. All right, away we go again. The 3-2 pitch, high ball four. And that's a run for the Erickson squad, Team Erickson. Really good at bat there by Beltre. Fought off a couple of tough pitches, laid off a couple of tough pitches, ultimately walked the, worked the walk, and now Erickson's on the board. Yeah. That's Grand Hussey heading back into the dugout. Tom Flash, Gordon comes out. He is going to make a change. And it looks like he's going to make a call into center field. Yeah, it looks like Jeffrey Waters coming in. Obviously, with the seven innings condensing down into seven innings, you're going to have a couple arms that wouldn't get their inning. Going to split a couple innings here. Good to go. We'll step aside while Waters gets loose. He's out of Mableton, Georgia. He plays all over the diamond. Two to one is the score. The Perfect Game Select Baseball Festival. Base is loaded, two to one the score. Flash Gordon, Tom Flash Gordon's team on top. Leading Scott Erickson's team, former Major League pitchers, coaching these two teams. And this is Jeffrey Waters out of South Cobb High School in Mableton, Georgia. Deidre is mom, Aaron is dad. And it's a familiar name for us here, having been a second time participant of the Select Festival. Primary outfielder, has big juice in his bat, but he also jumps on the mound, and it's easy. The mechanics, the arm action, the velocity, it all comes easy for Jeffrey, a young Maryland commit. And when I say young, he's still only 14, and 14 and a half years old. 2020 commit, really young for the grade. So the talent's there, and it's, it's a, remarkable just how young he is. So Waters, who has had his moments again this year, has the bases loaded in this situation. This year at the 15U Worldwood Bat Association Summertime Championship, he had a pair of singles, he had a pair of doubles, he had a pair of triples. In eight games, he had a 706 on base percentage, and he's just that talented of an all-around athlete. Team elite, his travel squad, Brad Boris, the leader of that group. One of the better teams in the country. We'll tell you always, high school and travel team, because if you're playing at this level, then you're doing both, and you're doing both prolifically. You're an important part of your school situation, and you're an important part of a travel team playing a little bit more baseball to refine your skills. In this case, for Waters, it's South Cobb High School. Hey, but that, that's how the story should be told, correct? Oh, definitely should be told like that. And did you notice over there at second base how Beltre's over there he's talking to the other guys about his at-bat? I mean, he's really having fun out there. And this, and this is what this game is ultimately about. And, and that's exactly what he's displaying right there. Yeah, out there behind him at second base, huge conversation with his teammates, <laughs> with the middle infielders. Dimitri, this is what you're talking about. Yeah, look at him. Look at him, he's at home at second base. Look at him. Yeah, yeah, I went like this and yeah, I stayed on that ball. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> talking with his fellow Dominican and a little bit of a prayer that the at-bat went his way. <laughs> Look at him. Boy, he's so animated. You gotta love it. You gotta love it. He has a smile on his face from the moment he wakes up until he goes to bed. All weekend, always smiling, speaking Spanish, speaking English. He speaks both very well. Just, he's really enjoying his time here. Rylan Galvan now, his opportunity to hit. Galvan Team City is his travel team out of Sinton, Texas. And he's got a twin brother, not an identical twin brother, but a twin brother who is a competitor in this game. It's a great story. And that fastball from Waters, 85, an easy 85, dies down and away. Galvan, one of the players again that we first got to see at one of those 14 new regional showcases. In fact, it was the very first one we ever did out in Texas. This, both of them, their, their skills just stood out so much. They were high on the top prospect list. They came to the national, and now ultimately they're back in Fort Myers. One and one the count. 88 miles per hour on that fastball from Jeffrey. 2100 spin rate according to Trackman. A lot of tools on the mound. A lot of tools at the plate here for Galvan. And I mean, the tools just speak for themselves after you get to watch him play over a weekend series. Skips that one in there, the 1-1, one, one, and King just hockey style keeps it in front of him on a backhand. You start getting up above 22, 2300 on a fastball with spin rate. If we're talking about fastball spin rate, then you're doing something. Obviously, if you're, you're higher than that, you, you almost have the effect or the feel of the illusion of a rising fastball. But it's easy off his fingertips. And watching Jeffrey Waters Develop. I've seen him develop since the age of 12 when he came to <clears throat> Elite Development Invitational. And over the course of the time, I talked to his parents the other day, and um, he actually made the travel ball switch. He is with uh, Marquise Grissom Baseball Academy out in Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, the, what Marquise focuses on is the development of ball players. You know, when you come and play in these tournaments, it's one thing to be able to to show off your skills, but how does it play in the game of baseball? And that's what Marquise Grissom teaches. He played 17 years in the big leagues, and like Tom, Gore, Flash Gordon, and myself, we are involved with Elite Development Invitational and also the Breakthrough Series. So we're heavily involved in the amateur ranks, and with the saying all that, we want to see these guys develop. And developing means teaching them the, the proper way of playing the ball, playing the ball game, out there on the field knowing where to be it and different cutoffs and knowing what pitch to throw as a pitcher right now. And you have guys like Flash Gordon. That one trickles away, a run will score. Yeah. And having Marvin Freeman and guys like that, you know, we're passionate about the next level of ball. And in order to teach our own that, we have to have programmed and not only just have a one-time deal, we have to have them keep coming back so we can have these guys go to college or playing professionals, just keep playing ball because the African-American race as a whole, and there's not that many of us in the game and we're going to football and basketball and sports that they really don't like because they really love baseball. And when you get in the perfect game and you get ranked, Good shot, foul. You kind of keep that love for the game. Which makes a lot of sense, and there's hand-in-hand -hand work being done with Perfect Game and the Breakthrough Series teams at Perfect Game events and using and sharing facilities like we saw earlier in a feature, if you missed it, out in Compton, California, one of the 14 new events. Dimitri makes a, a really good point about the importance and the effort and the focus in your you're seeing the difference. That had to be a, a pretty healthy exit velocity, by the way, off the bat of Ryland Galvan. Yeah, I was watching Ryland take batting practice yesterday, and I wrote down that this kid, he has a lot of line drive, a lot of solid contact, and that's what you look for for any good hitter is how consistent does he make hard contact with a nice swing. And he has a nice swing, and thus, when you have a nice swing with great balance and all that, you're going to get results like hard hits or a solid contact because that's what they look for in the game of analytics. How many times you hit the ball hard because that equate sometimes in 
affect uh, your batting average, in which they don't care about, but they care more about solid contact <clears throat> for whatever measurement that is. Jeremy, do, would you know the measurements of all of that? I'd have to assume that exit velocity is a part of it. The just just how often you find the barrel as opposed to swings and misses, stuff of that nature for sure. Full count, two outs, first base open, 2-2 two, two score. Waters, this is low, ball four. Galvan reaches and there is another member of Sky Erickson's team we're gonna get to know. His name is Cole Young. Young with his chance, and he's a Pennsylvanian out of Wexford, Pennsylvania, North Allegheny High School. No relation. Okay. <laughs> Joanne is mom, Rick is dad. And a pretty left-handed stroke, according to some of your notes. Yeah, the high contact, we got to see it yesterday during the scrimmage, sack fly to center field, uh, two RBI single back up the middle. You talk to Cole just about hitting and his approach. And he'll tell you he's not he's not a big time power hitter. He's not gonna try to overpower the baseball. He's gonna do the little things, gonna try to move the runners over, try to score a couple of runs. Basically he said he just wants to do whatever he can do to help the team win. He plays for US Elite, like you said, he's a top of the order, table setter type. And being a left handed hitting middle infielder, he's, he brings the package that you want in a young prospect. Number twenty three on the back of that jersey has some runs out there. Trying to find some comfort throwing strikes in waters. Young, a good basketball player, too. And the top fundraiser last night at our awards banquet dinner. Inside. For the Golisanos Children's Hospital. And so congratulations to all these athletes raising more than $33,000 for the fight against pediatric cancer. Always such a big part of the efforts of Perfect Game at at any place, wherever they roll that van up and have an event, they give back. Inside, ball four, he walks in a run. Yeah, I see Jeffrey from, a, from the right hand of the stand, as I stand with the left hand, he's not getting over on his pitches. Because the ball is tailing up and away, and he doesn't have that control that you would normally see out of out of him on the mound. Mikey Romero will get to know the sweet swing of the young man out of the San Diego area. San Diego show Brian Kane's travel team, Menifee, California. Mom is Melissa, dad is Michael. Dad played at San Diego State, mom with a long career in law enforcement. Swing and a miss, a good breaking ball from Waters and a good aggressive approach. That's not a fair pitch for Romero to open his bat on. <laughs> you got you just had a four pitch walk. You gotta be expecting a fastball just to get it over and Waters goes first pitch slider. And a pretty good one too. Bases are full for Mikey. Mr. Murray out of high school. Oh, that one skips in there and got his foot. And if if I'm Mikey, I say it, it didn't get me. No, it didn't. <laughs> and he will take his base. He's a great, great family story, Mikey Romero. His sister, Sierra, played so well, so legendary softball at Michigan, and is now part of the USSA Pride travel team. And hopes to play in the Olympics. Other sister, Sydney, an All-American, a two-time national champion, Women's College World Series winner, Oklahoma. Those are the sisters. And so now the ball player in him in his 4-2 score says, I've learned a lot from the swagger, the success, the approach, how to take on a diamond sport for my sisters. That's, that's a unique relationship Mikey has. Yeah, it's a different, different field, but same mental approach to everything. You bet. You still got to get between the white lines at the end of the day, and you can tell he just grew up with a bat in his hand on the field somewhere. That's an angry fastball inside. He wants to find the strike zone. Rene Galvan, we told you earlier about Ryland, who had his opportunity out of Sinton, Texas. Rene, Jennifer is mom, Eddie is dad. And Rene, he just keeps taking strides every time we see him. The arm gets a little quicker, a little stronger out of the hand. The bat, it's a fluid stroke. It's an all fields approach right now. While Ryland hits for a little more power, Rene hits for the uh, average from either side or to either side of the field. And it's the body and the swing that you know is just going to continue to get stronger. 
And that was the exact same thing that I wrote down when I was watching him hit yesterday. You know, it's compact. He has loose hands, and he tries to shoot the ball to all fields. He's not trying to drive it. And like you said, Rollins, the one on the right side, he's trying to he's trying to shoot you. He's, he might be small, but he's compact, and he's explosive. Whereas Renee here, he, he likes to Zorro the ball, you know, fillet it over here, fillet it over there. And that's just what I've seen out of the two days of watching him take BP. He's got the bases loaded and a big opportunity. Chases a breaking ball, a nasty slider down and away. But Scott Erickson's team plates four runs, and they lead it in the perfect game select. 14U Baseball Festival. Welcome back. I'm with Scott Erickson coaching the black and gold here at Perfect Game Festival. Scott, I'm going to brag on you for a quick second. You've earned a World Series ring back in 1991 yep. through a new hitter, no hitter in 1994. Is it possible to rank those events in your career? Well, the World Series by far is much more important. It's a big team game and that's a big team victory. So uh, 1991 is a year I'll never forget. It was amazing. And uh, throwing a no hitter is fun, but uh, it does not even come close to all the uh, the team that goes together, camaraderie, that's the thing you love most about baseball is all the guys getting together. And when you come together like that, we still go back every 10 years and celebrate. So uh, nobody talks about the no-hitter, but the World Series will never die. You were playing with a guy, Jack Morris, I know well, just got into the Hall of Fame. And two of you combined probably have a lot of advice to give. What, have, what are some of the things you've been saying to your guys here this weekend? One of the main things I'm working with the pitchers is trying to stay back. A lot of guys are in a hurry to get to home plate and throw the ball, and they kind of drift towards home. So one of the most important things for all young pitchers out there is to really Get your leg all the way up and let it start going down before you start moving forward. And a lot of guys are working that, and they're really I'm impressed, actually, how well they try to do it uh, quickly. So, But we know this game's important, and they want to pitch well, so it's hard to also change your mechanics at the same time. But give them things to work on after this down the road into the future. And we saw your team just scrap back and take the lead here. What can you say? What's so encouraging about your team? Well, just for baseball in general, this is great. There's uh, 44 of the top 14-year-olds uh, in the country, and... Uh, they're, they're big. They're six foot. They're great, good size athletes. These guys are going to be around and they're going to be future major leaguers. And uh, it's good to see the enthusiasm they have for baseball and know that there's that many good athletes out there who want to play the game. Scott, thank you so much. My pleasure. Guys? Yeah, great insights from Scott Erickson and the leadership that he has been providing all week long. And he was just a gutsy guy that no one liked to deal with. Jacob Miller hopes to be that guy on the mound out of Baltimore, Ohio. The right-handed pitcher who's a Louisville commit had to get out there and do some long tossing before the game today. That's part of his routine. Who is Mr. Miller as a pitcher? Oh, he's on, he's listed at six foot, 145, but it's a lightning quick arm. He's going to be up in the upper 80s, and the go-to pitch for him is a big 12-6 curveball. Oh, oh, goodness. Which Good he call. just displayed. Oh, he's my. Dealing with Andre Arthur, who's out of the Bahamas. Arthur taking that. Ooh, That's just not fair at this age. The belt buckler. From the Bahamas with a bat in his hand as the breaking ball heads on to the backstop. Arthur found his way here and again as at the Max D Sports Academy down in the Bahamas. He's been an honor roll student the entire time. He, he played for Elite Squad this summer. He really just jumped onto the scene. One of our scouts, Vinny Servino, found him at the 15U WWBA. Already a plus runner at 6'4", four, four ones down the line. He ran a 6'8", one the other day during our first practice there's thunder in his hands and when he gets the barrel out the ball is going to jump he'll be eligible to sign at 16 years old breaking ball nice job staying on top of that one that that event you're talking about the 15 u wwba the perfect game championship and those 19 plate appearances had an 800 ops very good numbers and caught the eye with that length that length and that athleticism he's so big but he's so young but he's so coordinated it's just a Breaking ball, let's watch the speed. Up the ladder, fires it on through, and so Arthur had to deal with the breaking ball, the Louisville commit, Jacob Miller. It's a full combination that international scouts are gonna want in a young prospect with Andre yeah, Arthur. Those wheels that size. And you've seen with Miller the confidence in the breaking ball. He's already gone to it three, four times in the first at bat. It's a quick arm. And he's able to maintain the velocity. Obviously, this is a one-inning look. During the summer, velocity climbed every inning we saw him. Armando Cruz, we've talked about him 
many hours ago when we came on the air. The focus of Cruz, just 14 years old, out of Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. Breaking ball, dives down and away. No balls and two strikes to count. But he shared with us his passion and his commitment, making trips up when he can to the United States. Got him with a hammer, down he goes. My goodness, that's a nasty that's pitch. That's just not fair at this age. Yeah, I'm left speechless. 12-6, already has a spin to it, has a bite to it, it has that six foot frame, continues to fill. He's gonna not only lengthen out, but he's gonna fill out that hand speed. It's gonna just become that much more of a dragon pitch for him coming on. Lucas Torres out of Puerto Rico. Areli is mom, Julio is dad, and his main coach, Eddie Ortiz, a big important part of his life as he holds up on that breaking ball Torres does. We've talked, I've said this before about other players. Lucas Torres, first time we got to see him was at the 14U Florida Showcase. Shortly thereafter, he committed to Alabama State. Then he came to our 14U National. All his metrics went up. Big time arm strength all over. Ran the sub 760, has juice in his bat. He can play literally anywhere on the field and we will see that with him. He threw yesterday in the scrimmage. He'll catch a little bit today, played the outfield, all over the place. One and one the count to Lucas Torres as that breaking ball skitters on by and heads to the backstop. Now, do you think that some of these hitters, they try and emulate big leaguers? Because I watched him take B BP yesterday and he reminded me of Javier Baez. Well, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, with the success that Javier Baez had in being a, a former perfect game member, you know, uh, why not? You know, I think you're on to something right there, Dimitri. There's no doubt that that goes on. And I know when I was growing up, I used to try and imitate guys, and it actually helped me with my swing and with my approach just by taking bits and pieces of what I watched on television and then tried to do it in the cage and wind up adopting some of the things into my swing. Who? Who'd you emulate? Well, once I started switch hitting, I was always a Daryl Strawberry fan. Okay. Unfortunately, I'm not 6'6 six, six and 180. I was more like 6'2, 250. <laughs> and, and so I was more like Tony Gwynn on the left side, but on the right side, I was more like Kevin Mitchell. We'll get the medic in here. It sounded like you had a frog in your throat there just a moment ago. Here's Jeffrey Waters. Those are some good hitters to emulate. Google them, you young people out there. They could play. Skipping into there, cutting himself off a little bit. That recoil is very important on his breaking ball. It kind of hits the wall. That gets the snap on the breaking ball, but he's cutting himself off on the fastball a little bit right now. And so the right-hander has a 1-0 count as he falls behind. A little bit better with a good fastball down and away from Jacob Miller. This is a great high jumper, Miller, by the way, a great athlete. High jumping five feet, 11 inches in eighth grade, state champ last year at his age group. Just think of that. That means he's high jumping his own Himself. body length. Yeah. Yeah, that's, you don't, with all due respect to pitchers, you don't usually think of pitchers as high jumpers. That'd be your center fielder or your shortstop. Yeah, you think of pitchers as golfers. Yeah, that's exactly right, but that speaks to his athleticism. Absolutely. So you take that athleticism, the projectability, and the present stuff, and you're able to see why Louisville pulled the trigger on Jacob Miller as quickly as they did this summer. Two balls and one strike to count. Early jump, quick fire, got to throw a strike, unable to do so. That one heads into left field. Draws another throw on a hop, and in there with the slide, nice and easy. Folks that have spent the evening with us tonight like it, Lucas Torres, very aggressive, moves all the way to third. And on this play right here, he was obviously picked off, but what the what the runner did, what Cruz did, he kept, he committed to second base, he forced the first base from the throw, he made an error throw, and he ended up at third base. A lot of times when someone gets picked off, they like to do the shuffle, shuffle, and try and trick somebody and end up getting in a rundown and being thrown out. That is exactly what you do if you're picked off and – you know, there's no hope. You, you just got to bust your butt to second base and hope that the first baseman throws it in the dirt. And that's exactly what happened. Two and two the count, so kudos to the aggressive base running out there. As Dimitri is saying of Lucas Torres. 
Just putting his foot on the gas, making them make a throw. And in this pressure environment, that's not always a bad idea. Breaking ball here. Let's see on 2-2. Two -two. Waters, I'm guessing, is guessing that it's coming. No, it's a fastball. I think he was because he snuck a fastball right by it. Put your foot on the gas and take a tour around the bases. If you come all the way to be a part of this game, if you're elite and you're a part of the select fest, don't come here to tiptoe through the tulips. Stomp on that ground. The Perfect Game 14U Select Festival on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Rawlings, the number one glove of pro players. Rawlings, the mark of a pro. By G4, you can't make the play if you're not in the game. Stay in the game with G4 baseball guards. G4, stay in the game. And by Nike Baseball, a proud partner of Perfect Game. Welcome back. I'm with Eric Green. Eric Green, you spent 10 seasons in the NFL, five with the Steelers, and now your son's out here playing baseball on the diamond. And he did play football for a little bit, but I'm wondering what you think about some of the opportunities that he's been given at events like this Perfect Game Festival to try and make a name for himself. Well, his um, opportunity has come from a lot of hard work. Um, you know, he has a lot of guys that's really helping him. He, he got a speed and conditioning coach by the name of A.J. Brooks, who shave a lot of times off his 60. He have a coach by the name of Jeff Hoyle that has been with him since he was nine years old, who's been nurturing him since the baby. So he's had a, a lot of good training, but he's extremely a hard worker. Let's talk about that 60-yard dash. He shaved seven-tenths of a second off of his time this summer. It took a couple of months. He practiced two times a week. What work did you see him put in to change that time to a 6-6? Well, just like I say, I had him with a speed and conditioning coach by a guy out of um, Boston College by the name of A.J. Brooks, and I swear by this guy. You know, I, I, I work out kids myself, but A.J. is the man when it comes to speed and conditioning and showing the kids the proper way to run. So I talked to Elijah this morning and he said something really thoughtful. He said, my dad won't let me fail. Can you expand upon that? Sure, because um, as I played 10 years in National Football League, I know what it takes to be, to get there. I know what it takes to stay there. So I'm just trying to, you know, just pass down some of my wisdom to my boy so that he won't think it's just his athletic ability is alone, but it's a lot of hard work that's behind the scenes. Eric, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me. Guys, back to you. That's great stuff, talking about Elijah Green and what has been passed down to him from Dad Eric and, of course, the, the character of Mom Leslie as well. We're seeing really good stuff on the mound. This is Christian Little. He's out of Team Elite in St. Louis, Missouri, Christian Brothers College, his high school, and he's a Vanderbilt commit. He first dealt with Hayden Murphy, and he got Murphy to go down on strikes with some really good stuff. But this is Christian Little. Every fastball out of his hand so far, 89, 90 miles an hour. We saw him last year. He looks like a different kid now physically. He's a lot stronger, put on a lot of muscle this offseason. Still has a feel for the three pitchers. The velocity's continued to climb so far. Five pitches, five strikes. And uh, he just does his thing on the mound. Here you go, the last pitch to Murphy. Just fastball out of half, good plane. We, he started the game last year, he's back this year, and he's continued to do his thing. Fastball got a piece of the home plate umpire there. Looks like he's all right. Take a moment to let him gather himself. Listen to this. He's gonna feel that in the morning. Just fine, thank you very much. By the way, hitting, and we need to remind you who that is, going through all these introductions after that great interview, this is Dylan Lesko. He is the fine pitcher getting a chance to swing the bat out of Buford, Georgia. Lesko very active in the travel ball world. Out of Buford High School. 24th PG event here tonight. Breaking ball, a dandy, and a stomp off the mound. Very confident in his approach. That's fun to see. The best thing about uh, Christian here, you got the curveball coming up right here for Lesko for strike three. His changeup might be his best off speed pitch, and we haven't even seen it yet. Logan Forsyth, who will take the baseball and go to work as a pitcher as well. 
Gets a chance to hit near the bottom of this order. Fastball, high and tight. Right up there under that cap bill. Foresight. And the Iberville, Mississippi elite squad. His travel team, Lori, his mom, Dennis, his dad. Close Logan, stance. Logan jumped on the scene real early as a pitcher. Going into even, it might have been his seventh grade year, he was already up to 86. It's a special arm on the mound. We're going to get to see him here with the bat, obviously, as he's digging in. Did put one out last night in the, or yesterday afternoon in the prelims of the home run derby. Has bat speed. But it's his abilities on the mound that have really caught the attention of us and everybody else in the college ranks. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Breaking ball just missed inside from Christian Little. Joy spending time with his dad, Chris, who passionately played professional baseball independent league for about seven years after playing with Houston in the Montreal organizations. Fastball, 89 miles an hour, reared back and blew it by him. The Vanderbilt commit. And the thing that I've seen different from Christian Little from last year to this year, he added some identity to himself along with the added weight. You know, when we were at the Children's Hospital, he had a good time clowning me on my tattoo that I had on my back. That was an outing. Christian Little was outstanding with the confidence. About 40 pounds, bigger, stronger, tougher, and a bit of an edge, as Dimitri said. Big, strong Christian Little. You can now project this stuff, can't you, folks? He's a gold medalist as well this summer. That was an outing. Tuesday night at 7 Eastern, CBS Sports Network brings you coast-to-coast -coast coverage of college football as our team of experts recap all the action from around the country and look ahead to next week's games. Don't miss Inside College Football on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. And we get to spend time with you tonight. We're certainly enjoying it. Danny Wexelman, longtime major leaguer, Dimitri Young, Jeremy Brown, who is a big part of this scouting staff, national cross checker for Perfect Game. My name is Darren Sutton. Dylan Lesko, last night earning the award of Perfect Game's Pitcher of the Year. And Lesko, great personality, great arm. He showed us. Well, he did what he did on a nice feature we aired early on this evening. But the right-hander out of East Cobb, his travel program, Buford High School. Who is he as a pitcher? It's not that he's still finding who he is on the mound since he is so new to the position. But Lesko is, every time we see him, there's something new to him. The command sharpens up a tick. The slider that we talked about in the opening gets better. It's a new pitch for him, but yet the confidence is there for him to already call it his go-to pitch. You're going to see him on the mound with that short, compact, yet quick arm action. He grew up a catcher. Staying so, so short is going to allow him to repeat, and not only repeat, but also pump the strike zone. Great in the classroom, Dylan Lesko. He's a 4.0 GPA. And his first foe is a man who works as a pitcher but gets an opportunity to hit tonight. Riley Stanford out of Gainesville, Georgia, big basketball player as well at Buford High School. A couple of teammates dueling here. If you're the high school coach here, you got these two guys coming in you're into your freshman class. Rocket shot, base hit, teammate against teammate at Buford High School. Looking forward to into second with the double. That's great emotion there, back into the dugout. That's the first hit in a game that otherwise has had you know, a few bouts with wildness and some sloppiness defensively. This is the first beautiful swing, and it comes from a guy who pitches most of the time. And there's the bragging rights there right now. First matchup probably amongst the two. Riley wins. You just hear the sound off the barrel. He, he lists himself as a primary outfielder. Fielder. He's got a big arm on the mound, but he also has swung it all well all summer. And he's very animated, too. When I was throwing batting practice to him, the first pitch he hit out on me, and he was bragging and boasting the rest of the batting practice, and he didn't hit anything else out. <laughs> and then by his demeanor, I also thought he was a pitcher. <laughs> Boy, was I wrong. Tamar Johnson walked and scored earlier in this contest. Dimitri talked about him coming on the air, the athleticism, the ability to play in the middle of the field. He's out of... Atlanta, Georgia, 
Benjamin E. Mays High School, where he's a Beta Club member, does great things in the classroom. Team Halo is travel team. You wouldn't be able to tell by the confidence level that Tamar has that he is, in fact, the youngest player here either. He's 14 point, I think we were talking, we figured out 14.2 months. So he just turned 14, yet he's one of the loudest, most vocal, energetic, <laughs> energized. He's the center of every conversation that goes on on the bus. Anderson couldn't hold on to that one and covering the plate is Lesko. So trying to come all the way around to beat his teammate to the plate, maybe almost too aggressive there. Stanford out at the plate. Well, you can't blame him to hustle on that. He saw that Lesko wasn't exactly busting his butt to home plate, so he took that chance. And, you know, he got beat on it, but you can't fault him for, for hustle. Lesko's teammate, high school teammate, was seriously? What are you doing there, partner? The 3 1. Fastball, beautiful approach, base hit into left field. Oh, there's Robinson Cano for you. And I forgot to mention his brother, Travell, who's going to be playing with the Breakthrough Series team out in the WWBA tournament here next month. Look at that swing, though. Outer half fastball running away. Tamar simply just flicks his hands, gets the barrel out, and stays through the ball. Short swing, very fast, impactful at point of contact. Look at it, right there. Yeah, that's picture perfect right there. That's exactly what you want to do as a hitter right there. The ball was up and away, and he went with the pitch. Shot that 5-6 hole. Owen won the count on Andrew Jones, if you're just joining us. That Andrew Jones is the son of that Andrew Jones, and boy, he is writing his own story now. Drew, as his teammates and friends call him. A little bit late on that one, serving that one off to the right side. 6-4-3 DP, his travel team. Mom is Nicole, and she was a heck of a softball player as well. And he's at the Wesleyan School. That's a good-looking changeup, fluttering down and in, and that's a stolen base. By Jamar Johnson. Playing for that 6-4-3 program based out of Atlanta. That means a lot of trips up to Lake Point. It's practically a second home during the summer. And what that means for us is we got to see him grow month to month, tournament to tournament. He's got the frame, he's got the long legs, a young face, and just the way he's able to whip the barrel with really loose wrists, you know there's more in there as he continues to develop physically. And the one thing that you have to say about the pedigree is He's seen his dad play on video because he's 14 years old and his dad stopped playing a few years ago. But, you know, all the actions that you see out of him and what you hear from him, that's exactly what his dad did, playing shallow center field and getting to balls that normal people wouldn't get to. Good fastball over the outside corner, a positive step there. There's the stuff. That last pitch we just saw a moment ago is why you like a Dylan Lesko out there. 88 miles per hour out of the hand. Mm. Could it spill right back over the outer half? So with that pitch to Drew, we saw the pitch to Tamar. He's working either side of the plate with the fastball. Breaking ball bounces in there to Ryan Clifford. Clifford out of Raleigh, North Carolina, Leesville Road High School. And he was a gold medalist this summer for that 15U USA baseball team that went to Panama and earned gold. One and one the count. I'm kind of anxious to see this young man swing the bat and hit the bat off his back again. I actually want to <laughs> see him break his bat. Anybody remember uh, Glenn Braggs, um, the superhuman, that used to play with the Cincinnati Reds in 1990 when they won the World Series? Well, he swung and his follow-through hit his neck and broke when he was facing Dave Stewart. I don't want to date you, but I was born in 1990. I was a junior in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Two and one the count. Oh, that was a pretty swing. Right He's there. on it. Ooh-wee. That was a changeup, too. And he stayed back a long time, 83 miles an hour. This is some of the better bat speed you're going to see here, too, for Clifford in this event. It's just really easy. Everything that comes to him is easy. He sees the ball. He's able to adapt to it. Two's across the board. Breaking ball. How about that take? Ooh. Comfortably taking that pitch. It just speaks to his ability to recognize out of the hand. 
know what sequences are coming. He's probably faced Lesko a time or two already and knows about the slider, so you're able to see him adapt in the box. 3-2, fastball outside corner, frozen. He went change up, a really good one. He went breaking ball and then fastball with a little bit of run. That's pitcher of the year stuff right there. Some fun in between innings, a shot to knock it over the wall off a tee for $30,000. And instead it was a bit of a Greg Maddox rollout, lots of fun. This was the big focus. You got to smile when that happens. You got to smile. Come on. Uh, hit the one in the middle. <laughs> That's great. That's so much fun. Uh, he's this giving a high five for failure. <laughs> this community is this community has embraced this event so well, and moments like that are pretty fun, quite frankly. I mean, it's just fun to see as we move into the bottom half of the fourth inning. The perfect game select baseball festival. <laughs> the best 14 U players in the nation. We we some here. returnees hey, as well. So certainly. Oh, what's up? Hey, 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 there you go. Hey, shout out Westminster fam. Hey. Me and Jaden. Oh, look at the, that's the that's no, no, what the no, winning dugout out looks Mr. like. Hey, hey, look at hey, all in front of the camera hey, throwing hey, up their little. I'm going to the U. I'm going to the. I was gonna go to the U too. Yeah, we're Hi, mom. And an introduction to the man on the mound. Right-hander going to work. Aiden Finitary, who did, by the way, a great job fundraising for Galasano Children's Hospital, one of the leading fundraisers. But he's out of Watertown, Connecticut. Avon Old Farms High School, school that years back produced George Springer, the all-star caliber player for the Houston Astros. Yeah, Finitary. Saw him this summer with the clubhouse baseball. Came out just as we see here, pure attack mode. Fastball is up to 90. Hides it really well through the back. Higher slot, lots of plane. And like we saw with Miller, like we saw with Siniscalchi, like we saw with Little, it's a big time breaking ball. Hard downer bite to it. And you're probably going to see it more often than not throughout his inning here. This is Trenton Shaw. We will see him pitch in all likelihood a little bit later. He has a bat in his hands. Out of DeSoto, Texas, DeSoto High School. A fastball, easy 89, up and about the cap bill. This is a real physical dude right here hitting. And weren't you talking to him, Jeremy, about him playing football and him, and him being small on the varsity football team? Yeah, he's listed 6'4", 210, and he says he's small for the, his high school varsity football team at DeSoto. So I'd like to see what that offensive line looks like. He runs track as well, plays basketball at his high school. Yeah. Basketball dives over the inside corner. And he's uh, our third set of twins that are in attendance or on the rosters. He's got a fraternal twin with his sister, but three sets of twins between the two rosters here. Good pitch, good run on that right arm of Finitary as he dips it over the outside corner. Comes out really easy for Finitary. About a week ago, just committed to Boston College, so he's going to stay home. High academics from both Avon. Boston College. Obviously, that was at the forefront of his decision. As you see him continuing to attack the strike zone. Fastball 88 right there. Paul just seems to really jump out of his hand and get on the hitters. Yeah, and what I saw out of Shaw Swing, he's got that, what what I saw out of BP has that old school pop. And what I mean by old school pop, I'm talking about when you look back at the 70s and the 60s and you see like Willie McCovey and and Willie Stargell and Reggie Jackson is the big, powerful left-handed hitters, and he has that kind of swing. Fastball misses in. Three and two the count to Shaw with that strength that Dimitri is talking about. You know, it's interesting, the development of Finitary and how as he gets a little older, pays attention to his baseball world around him. At 3-2, rolled out toward third. Bobbled if only for a moment. Recovering, throwing one across the diamond, and. The bobble was just enough to keep that play moving in the right direction. And so Cologne, who couldn't put his finger on it in the end, the native of Puerto Rico, there's a base runner, and Shaw is on. With that, we're back up to the top of the order with Elijah Green. We, we heard Danny talk to his father about the speed. He's already ran a 6.65, I believe, at the 14U National. It's elite speed for this age. He ran a 6.7 the other day. 
All he's got to do is put the ball on the ground and odds are he can beat it out. This one in the air. To the right side, easy chance in the end. That one put away by Calvert Clark, the right fielder. So Elijah Green with that elite speed, unable to take advantage. But to finish the thought about Vinatieri, he was saying, I've, I've learned a little bit, I, I've developed stuff developing too. But he said, with regard to what guys like you are looking at and coaches, he said, I learned that anything I do or say with my body language is worth a thousand words. Mm -hmm. He was saying it simply, my, I've learned that body language is like a, an a thousand word essay about you. And he's really a passionate kid, but he's, he's gained some stoic behaviors out there. Good breaking ball. Yeah, with the game being televised and archived, obviously the college coaches are out watching. You tell every kid, run out everything, play everything hard, because they can hit the rewind button. They can get the time and do it again and again on their stopwatch, make sure it's accurate, get the right run time. So if you're not digging down the line. Or in this case, towards second with a head first slide. Finish your thought. If you're not not going 100 percent, the college coaches are going to be able to see that as opposed to missing it when you're out in the summer in a in a off-site field where there is no instant replay. You get it here. So they all know to play 110 percent. Obviously, it's a special game for them either way. So. Yeah, nothing worse than not hustling, especially when you have cameras on you. That is one of the biggest turnoffs for a coach for a college recruiter, for anybody, really. Definitely scouting. If you're scouting somebody that is supposed to be that dude and you see him do something that's, well, disrespecting the game, you kind of want to turn the page, but you also want to give him another chance, too. For sure. Especially at this age. And seeing Shaw hustle down that line. And Cologne got it. <clears throat> Has a great arm, but because he was hustling, that could be the football mentality or... I won't say or. That's just the football mentality and his, his makeup. Breaking ball. Sal Stewart rolls that one to the right side. Covering the bag. Still got fit him. Terry got him. What a heads up play. Doing the little things well. Aiden Finitary went to the bag. Once it kicked free, he still got to that bag. And he waited and he waited. And Ryan Ward fed him with this play. Good play from Ward there, too. Off the redirect from Clifford, you got Finitary just covering the ground instantly. Off the bat, he went over. A lot, of, a lot of times at this age, you can see a pitcher just kind of forget to cover the bases. Go over to first. There you got to see it and with the end result of an out. That's, nice. that's 88 up and on your chin. Yeah, that doesn't feel good at 11.45. Doesn't, <laughs> doesn't feel good at any time. <laughs> Jace LaViolette. Finitary still just pumping 88, 89 every fastball so far. 4 to 2 is the score. Scott Erickson's team on top. Good fastball. Swings right through it. Got Jared Jones behind the plate. Even though he is listed 6'3, 225, he's athletic. He's behind the plate. We saw the arm strength on the throw down to second base, so. Don't discount him just for his size being behind the plate. Body spins off of that one. It stays high and inside. I'm talking about catchers. You had some of the bigger, stronger guys back in the late 90s and early 2000s behind the plate. But as you, as you were talking about, he has a lot of flexibility and movement behind the plate, and that's real key to being a catcher and having that durability to be behind the plate once he turns pro, you know, playing in 100, at least 130 games to give his body a little bit of a break. And you see what's going on with Yadier Molina and and Buster Posey. You know, his bodies, they need days off because it's such a grueling, demanding position. Working with Jared Jones out of Marietta, Georgia, Walton High School. He's got all his Rawlings gear on. Custom gear this year for all our all of our catchers, plus a couple arm sleeves from uh, G Form there, so he's extra protected for football season. The three-two with two outs just took it right out of the catcher's mitt, and so we'll do it again. That was a fastball at 88 miles an hour. The TrackMan spin rate on that was nearly 2,400 on that fastball. 
just gives it that little, that little extra jump. You see in a couple late swings here from Jace, from Trent, going the opposite way there. Even from Sal, sat back a little bit, but still, you get, the hitters aren't picking it up, getting it cleanly out of his hand. Aiden Finitary rocks and fires at 3-2. Aviolette takes high, that's ball four. That was a great at bat by Lafayette right there. No fouling off pitches and making the pitcher work. Ethan Anderson, who was working behind the plate, takes that catcher's gear off. It's on that protector. Now Ethan ready to roll. Ethan similar to Luke Davis, the other switch hitting catcher in that. They're both natural right-handed hitters. I was talking to both of them during BP, just asking them, seeing what they're more comfortable with, because every time we see them, more often than not, they're facing a right-handed hitter, which means they're going to be digging in left-handed. So you get a comfort feel for them batting left-handed. You don't see so much right-handed. So when you do know that it's their natural side, it makes what you've seen left-handed all the more impressive. Want to know the count? That one, a breaking ball that misses high. That was a good take right there. He wasn't looking for that pitch at all. Looking for a fastball right down the middle so he can drive it into the gap. Two and zero the count to Ethan Anderson, Frank W. Cox High School in Virginia. Matt Itner is his head coach. Played in an event Ethan did when he was younger at James Madison University. Homered. I mean, an over the wall homer, and he remembered it about a year and a half ago. He said, that really gave me a bunch of confidence to learn that I could do that. We talk about Clifford playing up with the Canes. Ethan has been playing up with the Tidewater O's for a few years now, too. Last year at one of the underclass events in Fort Myers, hit in the middle of the order, doing the everyday catching, and he put up numbers hitting north of, north of 300 on the event, despite being two, three years younger. Inside, three and one, the count to Ethan Anderson. I absolutely love his poise up there at the plate, real patient. And I love this 2-0, Hack. That's what you do, 2-0. You, you take an absolute rip at it. But Phil Terry has been around the zone, and he hasn't been at anything outside of uh, Anderson's hitting zone. High fly ball left field, hangs up for a long time and dumps in there. The throw heads in the third. It skips away and far enough for another run to score. And not only that, look where Anderson is at. All the way into third. That was tremendous base running. The throw went to third. He was halfway to second base. He was waiting to see where the throw was going. Once he saw it get past the third baseman, he just ran around all the way to third. Going to the opposite field is something Anderson does really well. And then you get to see him go on the bases. Yeah, that's beautiful right there. And then he kicks it up once he sees where the ball goes. And it's a 6-2 to two lead for Scott Erickson's bunch. And can I say I'm glad to see the catcher running because in high school ball, a lot of times the catcher will get on base and he'll always get a pitch runner and never being able to learn how to run the bases properly. Yeah, that's an athlete out there. He runs them just fine. Oh, and one the count to Grant Hussey. Hussey plays uh, 2021, so he's pl he's able to play up at the 15 U level as a 21. And the power is something that intrigued all of us this summer. It's an easy lofted left-handed swing. Committed to West Virginia, did so right after the 15 U WWBA. You talk to him about it and. It came down to just being his dream school. He wanted to be a Mountaineer, wanted to stay in state, and he got what he wanted after his performance at Lake Point. Place for head coach Todd Berner at Parkersburg High School. Manages a, about a 3-7 in the classroom. That one chopped foul back behind home plate. Got a chance to beat. Mom Jan last night, Dad Steve, we talked about Dad Steve, a great musician, actually has his own record label. And both uh, both his mom and stepdad and dad and stepmom were here and you love seeing that and putting him first and the four of them celebrating together. Absolutely. 
Bouncing ball in the middle of the diamond. Gobbled up out there. The throw is low. Ward, who made such a fine play earlier in the inning, just kind of got flat-footed that time and wasn't able to put any accuracy or much of anything on that on that ball at all. So Hussey moves all the way around with that miscue. Yeah, unfortunately, when the game goes a little slow like that and it's late like this, right there, didn't set his feet properly and just kind of whipped it over there instead of just giving a nice, easy throw to first base with two outs. It happens. And so Hussey out there in this 7-2 to two game. Scott Erickson, Tom Flash Gordon, the leaders all week long with these athletes. Perfect game select baseball festival. Some of the finest 14U players in the nation. Benetieri goes right back to work. Why not? Travel just, ball with the clubhouse elite team. Just keep attacking. That's that's what he does on the mound. Doesn't matter what's going to happen behind him. He's going to try to pump the strike zone, and he's going to try to get the hitter out himself. And that was a healthy hack right there. Got an interesting matchup here, too, with Connecticut versus Delaware. Two states you don't usually see represented in an all-star setting like this, but love it. Just kind of speaks to how the game itself keeps growing and our uh, the our ability to recognize talent and find the talent no matter where it goes, no matter where it takes us throughout the country. The combatants, Northeastern United States baseball. Boy, what a breaking ball that was! And there was some plays behind him that should have been made. He didn't hang his head. He just went right back to work. A talented bender. Big inning though. Erickson squad up five. Seven to two is the score. Team Erickson on top of Team Gordon. Glad to have you with us on CBS Sports Network for the Perfect Game Select Baseball Festival. Danny Wexelman down in the dugout. Danny, what do you have for us? Ona here with me. And Daniel, we're going to talk about Diamond Connects. We're going to do a little show and tell. So they've got this really advanced technology to help pitchers it's called Pitch Tracker. Tell me how it works. So Pitch Tracker. Pitch tracker is basically a ball that you throw in your bullpens whenever, and it tells you your spin rate, velocity, and spin direction, which is very helpful for a pitcher. So everyone's trying to get an edge in this game. Everyone wants something to advance their game. How are you going to use this information now that you know about this to advance your game? Well, obviously spin rate and spin direction is very important for a pitcher. The more spin on a pitch is harder for a hitter to hit. And um, the spin direction, like, it helps you understand as a pitcher if you have a 12-6, 1-7. And I also know that myself as a pitcher on my slider, I, I slightly drop my arm a little for more spin. Um, I don't drop it too much where the hitter can see the difference, but it helps me out a little more and it helps me get batters up. All right, guys, the more you know, Diamond Connects helping these guys get advanced with their pitching, their swinging. It's really cool. Daniel, thank you. Thank you. Guys? Danny, good stuff. That is a, a great piece of equipment and a great training aid, certainly, when you're working on the side doing your bullpen work. Daniel Corona out of Brooklyn, New York. We'll hear from him a little bit more. But now we hear from Logan Forsythe. The Iberville, Mississippi. The Iberville, incorporated as a city in 1988. Elite squad, his travel team, Lori, his mom, Dennis, his dad. How does he do what he does so well? You know, you look at them, it's it's a middle infielder type body, the square, lean build, but it's a really fast arm. And with that, we see here, uh, the velocity has always been premier. He was up to 91 this summer, and it just looks like he's playing catch. It just comes out so easy. We've got a tough hitter to deal with in the first pitch of breaking ball to Brady House out of Winder, Georgia. Winder Barrow High School, where he plays for a quality man and a good head coach there, Brian Smith. Perfect Game has him ranked as the number one player in the state of Georgia in the 2021 class. Brady continues to evolve both sides of the ball, and the bat this weekend has been loud. And that's an understatement. It's been more like thunder. <laughs> his round of BP today, he added probably another 20 dents to that wall, and then on his final swing, he finally put one out in BP before advancing and winning the home run derby. You know, this is a very impressive young man to look at and just think that 
He just turned 15 years old. And there's a lot of baseball left in that in that body right there. And I just like the way that he goes about his game. You know, he plays with a smile on his face, but it's, 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 there's intensity behind his game. And that looked like that hurt. Yeah, Brady takes one on the shoot top, and he will head down to first base. Logan Forsythe had that one dive too much down and in. And so House on, House gives way to Jared Jones. You get around one big Georgia bat, you got another one coming up with Jones, even more physical than Brady, just as much juice in his bat. And it's, it's, that's a really difficult back-to-back -to, -back to have to face to open up your outing. Top half of inning number five, seven to two the score. JetBlue Park, the spring training home of the Boston Red Sox. Out on the side of that breaking ball, it misses away, a ball and a strike the count. And Jeremy, like you were saying yesterday, he, he just showed up for the home run derby and he was just playing pepper off the green monster. And then final swing today of BP2, he also put one out of the stadium. It, it's just the type of swing, it's so easy and the ball just jumps. And when you're looking at a 14 year type player, that's, that's the abnormal. You're not going to find that all the time, but when you do, it's like, oh, that. Yeah, it's like he struck gold. That even, the foul ball even sounded different right there. Two and two, the count. <laughs> and it's so simple. It's just a short little stride, direct with the hands, really loose. Breaking ball right over the top of that one. And a good late breaking slider that just disappeared at the 12th hour. Boy, that was a good pitch. We've seen a lot of these young men on the mound. They really have a lot of great stuff. That's actually a changeup, Dimitri. Yeah. That was equally nasty. Wow. It's all about the tunneling like Flash Gordon was talking about. Same release point. It's, at this age, if you can land a changeup like that, you're going to find success more often than not. 1-0 and the count as that pitch misses away to Nathan Fink. He struck out looking back in the first inning. Fink's from Charlottesville, committed to UVA. That's a, that was really easy to put point A and point B together. Growing up, he says he lives about 10 minutes from campus. Two-way prospect, upper 80s on the mound. Won the 14U MVP this past summer. Really jumped onto the scene, hit three home runs. And it's the frame that you can dream on, the long, high-waisted build. Not a lot of physical strength yet, but a lot of twitch to his swing. Yeah, a lot of explosiveness. I watched. I was throwing batting practice to him two days ago, and I was really impressed by his swing. And I got to watch him swing yesterday, and I just love his calmness with his load. is a nice, silent load, but then when he gets that bat through the zone, he gets it through the zone. And obviously, he's going to get bigger, stronger, and that bat's going to play as he gets older. Nathan Fink has pretty strong lineage, too, athletically. His mom played collegiate tennis at Colorado. So a college athlete mom in that situation. And we've talked about the uniqueness of Fink as an athlete. I mean, he was his, his hockey travel team's MVP and team captain this past year. So he's not just kind of hanging around and still dabbling in hockey. He's an elite player. Well, you like to hear about these young men playing multiple sports. And, and, and I'm a component for that because I didn't get to do it. My dad wouldn't allow me to. But for those that get to play it, they get to understand the leadership in different sports and how to, how to function in those different sports and how it pertains to the other sports. You learn something new and you bring it to that other sport, which makes you even that much better. Justin Colon grounded out back in the first inning. Justin out of Puerto Rico. Hitting right-handed this time. Making the most of his opportunity right on right even. He just wants to show it. Yes, he does. Jorgeo Bautista de Carolina. He has his, his bat school. autograph, too. He, he did a couple uh, 
a couple tributes on his bat. He showed it to me this morning down at breakfast for, I believe, his uncle and a friend down in Miami that are both battling cancer. Well, what a great way to represent. Between that and his cleats, it really speaks to the type of kid he is as well, where his thought process is, and he's, he's done it all on his own. That's high character right there. Those are the things that you look for. Well, those are the things that I look for as a ball player, and that's part of having an identity right there. He's doing something that he feels is right and not, a, not ashamed to show it. And matter of fact, you know, I really, I really like that. Uh, that's, a, that's a caring person right there. Had the patients, uh, if you're just joining us, at Golisano's Children's Hospital locally here in Fort Myers, had the young patients just gave him markers and let him go to town on his shoes. And that, that's his own work that he did honoring family members. And that's what the youngsters did, signing and doing some artwork. He was inspired by Bryce Harper doing it during the Players Weekend. Harper, a perfect game alum and a perfect game All-American. So one PG alum passes it down to a youngster in the crew. That one skips in there to Calvert Clark. And during Players Weekend, Harper did very much the same thing before going to play for the Washington Nationals. Justin came down to lunch wearing his, er, holding his cleats. And it's lunch, we're going to the hospital. I go, Justin, you don't need your cleats. We're going to the hospital, not the field. He goes, but I want the kids to sign them. I want to carry that with me into the game. I'm like, you, you, absolutely. There was no question, no hesitation. Just go ahead and do it. And everyone asked him, are you going to wear those in the game? He goes, oh, absolutely, without question. So, so here, here's a question to you, Jeremy. When, when you're considering picking players for for these select teams, and I mean the 14 you all the way up, does that play a factor? You look at it, and if two players are even and you know something like that, obviously it's always it's never going to detract from a player. You want the best talent you can get, but at the same time, when you have a kid like that with that type of head on his shoulders, you want him around as much as you can have him. Calvert Clark earns the walk, a run scores. And so Logan Forsyth trying to find the strike zone, scuffling a little bit with his command. He's got just one out in the inning. It was a strikeout. Tucker Tolman now out of Hammond High School. Tolman struck out looking. Quick visit, Gary White comes out to have a conversation. Tolman's another switch hitter, listed as switch hitter, but really just takes most of his reps left-handed. I asked him, do you switch hit? He goes, yes, but I see so much right-handed. I really, he's become so comfortable hitting left-handed. When you watch him in the box, it's like, that's pretty good. Just keep doing that. You know, I, I, would, I would agree with that, except that once you get in the pro ball, there's a lot more lefties, so granted, Great swing on the left side. It's not going to hurt him to just continue to flirt with the right side. And then when it's time for him to start switch hitting again, it's, not, it's like riding a bike. He can get back on there and, and get back to the swing of things. So I would, I mean, if I was to give him any advice, is not to give up the switch hitting, but continue to get your left handed at best to keep that nice and sharp. Tobin lifts that one into left field, hangs up for a long time, drops in. So run will score. Seven to four is the score. Making a run after that baseball, just unable to get there. Elijah Green, left field's been a bit of a challenge tonight. Kind of where do you play? How do you do it? And so Tobin with a single and an RBI. Oh, had an attempted theft of home with uh, thinking the catcher pitcher weren't paying attention. Yeah, while well, that was all going on, that's exactly what happened. Justin Cologne tried to sneak in and steal home, and Anderson would have none of it. Literally, just a moment ago, tried to swipe home and has to head back to the dugout. That's two runs now for uh, Team Gordon that have been thrown out at the plate. Good fastball Ooh. pours in there. Let's see if we can catch the end of that play. Ooh, 
play by Anderson to catch and get the tag down. Yeah, that was almost disaster. No balls and two strikes to count to King. Lamar King, Rosedale, Maryland, Calvert Hall College High School. Just like Elijah Green, his father too played in the NFL, first round pick. So the bloodlines obviously run deep. It doesn't have to be the same sport, but the athleticism comes through and got a lot of uh, bloodlines here in this game. 0-2, bouncing ball left side. Laid on a backhand. Is there a play? Fired across the diamond. You betcha. Great play. Nice play by Hayden Murphy there. Showed the arm earlier off the mound and there across the diamond. Hayden Murphy unloads with this one. A man out of Chula, Georgia. Tipped Area Academy. Hayden. Rocket. 7-4. <laughs> Welcome back. We have some really exciting news to get to. I'm with Manuel Beltre. Manuel, you have a big announcement to make. What do you want to share with everybody right now? Um, I got an important, I'm going to say something important right now. I would like to commit to the FIU University. Hey, there we go. We got all the guys behind him. Manuel, congratulations. I want to turn really quickly, Jaden Melendez. Jaden, you're a perfect game alum. You, you're also committed to FIU, and your dad happens to be the head coach. What do you love so much about the program? Well, honestly, since I've been there just for so long, I, I think the brotherhood that the teams uh, that the team is surrounded by, I think that really helps. And and of course, I mean, coaching staff is all right, but I think the brotherhood that they bring, and of course, the experience that they have, I I really I think that's one of the big assets that they have to bring. Awesome, and you have a question for Manuel because you guys are going to be teammates in the future. What do you got for him? So, uh, what what made you commit to FIU? Like, what really brought brought you to FIU? Uh, because I think it's fit with me. I like the coaches and the school. You know, I think it's me. I think that FIU is me. Yeah, bro. Manuel, congratulations, yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. guys. Back to you. That's great stuff. Congratulations. How exciting is that? <laughs> Team Erickson, Manuel. <laughs> Mervo Melendez, head coach there. You might remember MJ Melendez, first round pick a couple of years back. High, high draft pick of the Kansas City Royals, a perfect game All-American. He's the, uh, the other son and the, the older brother, the professional catcher in the Royals organization. So that, that's a neat moment. Congratulations. Manuel Beltre is headed to FIU, Florida International University. Congratulations. They're having fun down there. Well, I'll be, I'll be having fun too. We're winning and we have a fellow teammate committing. Yeah, I'll, I'll have plenty of swag too. Over the inside corner, that's strike three to Luke Davis. This is Riley Stanford on the mound out of Gainesville, Georgia. We saw him hit earlier, April. His mom, Ron, his dad, Stanford, loves Chipper Jones. Boy, when they talk to him about why he loves this game, that's who he mentions, the brand new, newly minted Hall of Famer. All county. Football and basketball player, too, in both 7th and 8th grades. So this is just a really good all-around athlete, Jeremy. Yeah, you're looking at Stanford here. Just It's the same personality he has on the mound, same personality in the box, on in the outfield. He's just a loose kid with a big arm, and he's showing it here. That one dives down and away. Easy chance. There's a good-looking changeup. Had Renzo Gonzalez way out front. This is... Good stuff thus far in the inning. Yeah, he dropped the slot there, gave it a different look to Renzo. Fastball's been upper 80s already. It's a quick arm. He, you're going to watch him here do a little shimmy before he pitches. Every every pitch, he does a thing when he's in the box where he licks his hands between before every pitch, looking down at the third base coach. It's a loose personality, but it's also there, there's athleticism and there's talent on both sides, so he's able to back it up. Good fastball. Manuel Beltre, we heard him just a moment ago. Do you guys remember that time when Manuel Beltre committed to Florida International? Yes, that was an awesome event. Seemed like only yesterday. Years ago. Oh, and won the count. He's got a bat in his hands now. Dropped the slot there again. Little Laredo there down low. I really like Stanford's uh, quirkiness and stuff. He's kind of like Mark the Bird Fidrich. All right, people that don't know who he is, Google him. <laughs> the 1-1. Fastball right in on the knuckles. 
For all the quirkiness, there is the athleticism that we told you about, and this is a Duke Tip nominee. I mean, this is a young man talking about Stanford that is a great student. Straight A's all through middle school. And that Duke Tip nomination is a big, big deal. That's test taking at its highest level. Breaking ball, ground ball got out in that to kitchen. short. On across the diamond and in time nice for the out. Out. And there goes the spaceman. One, two, three, and Riley it's Riley. Stanford. Thursday night at 9.30 Eastern, the world's most grueling competition comes to an end. As the last athletes remaining leave it all on the line in hopes of being named the 2018 Tachi Palace World's Strongest Man. Don't miss the final right here on CBS Sports Network. That gentleman competing in that contest. <laughs> I like it. Oh, why they have to show the swing and miss? I like it. I like it. Because if he's a father of one of the young men here, <laughs> yeah, Dad, you trying to tell me how to hit? <laughs> Trenton Shaw will try to show us how to pitch as he goes to work in the middle of the diamond. A Dallas Tigers travel ball competitor. That is where Clayton Kershaw did his work on the travel ball side. He's out of DeSoto High School. These guys, both Dimitri and Jeremy, were talking about his exploits as a great athlete. He also plays basketball and runs track for DeSoto High School as well. Yeah, this is just a gifted, gifted person. This is, you know, I have so many people to thank for having this opportunity. It's Nikisha and Andre, my mom and my dad. But then I suddenly start thinking about all the prayers that are set my way when I travel or in the classroom for my grandmother or my auntie. Took a lot of time with us to be really reflective. This is Trenton Shaw pitching. Trenton Shaw, the situation at Lake Point was similar to this, where you had you had the rain delay. It was long. It was a long day, and he comes out. It's a 14U event. And he comes out onto the mound just pumping. 80, 85, then 86, 87, ultimately peaks at 88. Left-handed with his size at midnight. It looked like a million miles an hour. The curveball continues to develop for Trent. You, you've seen what he can do with the bat. And you're going to be able to see what he can do on the mound. Again, another two-way prospect. The arm strength, the, the delivery, it's all going to continue to just come together as he learns his body. He's so big, so young. But he's so strong and athletic that he's able to make it work already. And so he goes to work against the Southern California. Ash Gordon talking about the heart that goes into playing this game. Ryan Ward, we were talking about him earlier. Dad Kevin, who had a nice little journey to the major leagues and also played football and baseball at the University of Arizona. Mom, Christina. And Ryan takes... Pitch it dives low below the zone. 1 0 oh, the count to Ryan Ward. Infield, outfield, straight up. Out of the Coronado area in San Diego, California. That one sails inside. 2 0 oh, the count. I really like how Ward is up there against a fellow lefty and Shaw. And a lot of times you never see a lefty lefty battle. There's always the matchup. And when you see something like this and see the composure that that Ward has up there, one, that's a sign of a great hitter, somebody who's seen left-handed pitching on a regular. And number two, you know, when you're advanced like that, instead of worrying about, oh, I might see the curveball and miss it, he can sit in there and, and keeping his shoulder closed and everything is right there in position, ready to strike as soon as he sees that pitch in his zone. Ash Gordon squad. Three and two the count. Shaw's really getting some good angle on the fastball now. You're seeing the velocity continue to creep up. Just getting comfortable on the mound, obviously, with a situation, a setting like this. And it's only going to make for that much more difficult of an at-bat for the guys coming up.
There's that breaking ball. He threw it on 3-2. It misses outside to Ward. That was interesting um, pitch, select, uh, pitch call right there. 3-2 with a lefty. I don't know if he was thinking he was going to try and trick him. But right there, power versus power, 3-2. If you're going to walk somebody, you'd rather walk them on your best pitch, not your secondary. Andre Arthur, elite squad, his travel team out of Nassau in the Bahamas. High fly ball right field. He put a good swing on that. Put a real good swing on it. Jace Laviolette puts that one away for the first out in the inning. Arthur's one you're going to have to watch here. He, obviously, being international, he's going to come off the market earlier than some of the kids come draft day for them. But the tools and just how they continue to refine at such a rapid rate for Arthur, plus what he can already do, it, it's a lot of now tools, but it's also a lot of future projection that you, that really go well together. Armando Cruz takes a good looking breaking ball that spins in there for strike one. And like he was talking about the development of a player, you know, with Arthur being a fast learner and being athletic the way that he is, he continues to play this game, especially at this at this level when it's signing time for him. You know, he's going to go to an organization and possibly flourish, especially being the kind of kid that listens and wants to be a better ball player, become a big league ball player. Middle of the infield pinched in. Rocket Ooh. shot down the left field line, and that one is foul. Armando Cruz showing that bat speed that we know he has. Th that's been his biggest tool that's really continued to come along, Armando. We saw him at the 14U National the first year we had it as a 13-year-old. He took his infield, and you, you have a puzzled look on your face after watching him because you think to yourself, what, what did I just watch? No 13-year-old should be able to field a ground ball the way he can. Now the bat's really catching up to the glove. Two balls and two strikes to count. Top of the sixth inning, Danny Wexelman, Dimitri Young, Jeremy Brown. My name is Darren Sutton. Glad to have you with us. Perfect game select baseball festival here at JetBlue Park. Fort Myers, Lee County, Florida. A gathering of the finest 14 U players in the country. There's a tremendous hole between first and the second baseman. There's a tremendous hole if he can hit that ball in, in between first and second. And those are the things that you see out of the top of the lineup hitters. They have tremendous back control, and they're able to do whatever they want. And apparently, young Beltre looks like the kind of hitter that will eventually learn that. Couldn't get it out of his glove, but in time to get the runner at second base. Uh, Ryan Ward Cruz reaches on a fielder's choice. Bobbled for a step or two, but then Mikey Romero got it out of his glove and recorded the second out of the inning. And here's Lucas Torres. Had a little bobble right there, but it's 12.26 in the morning here on the <laughs> East Coast, so... Um, you know, close, only counts in horseshoes, hand grenades, and late games. <laughs> well, look at that breaking ball hit the Shaw. inside corner. That pitch is starting to come along for him here now. The more he throws it, the more feel he's getting for it, finding the release point. Puerto Rican native. Alabama State commit. We were listening a moment ago, that commitment of Justin Colon to Florida International, where he'll play for Mervil Melendez. Melendez, for quite some time, literally built to a higher stature that Alabama State program before moving down south to Miami. They're the, uh, they're the team to beat in the SWAC now every year, Alabama State. Starts all with the recruiting, being able to get the players on campus, and then obviously the development of them once they get to campus. And a real connection with the Latin American player. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, you hope to see that evolve in college baseball. And, and 
Oh, go ahead. And what city is that in? Montgomery, Alabama. Oh, yes. The birthplace of my brother, Delman Young, and my sister, Deanne Young. High pop to the right side. Over, under, out as that one is put away. Hussey Johnny on the spot. Grant Hussey makes the play. 7-4 the score. Hour game. I don't hear anything. Hey, John. Seven to four is the hey, score. John. The bottom half of inning number six. Trying to get our wires connected with Danny Wexelman down inside the dugouts down below. As soon as we communicate with her, we'll hear what she has to say. Done a great job all throughout the evening down there. We do tell you there's a there's a new arm going to work for Team Gordon. The right-hander is Nathan Fink. We've seen him work athletically. Now Fink doing some work as a pitcher. He's a Virginia commit. And as you mentioned earlier, he does everything well. He plays multiple sports. He plays both sides of the baseball on the field. The right-hander, Nathan Fink, out of Charlottesville, Virginia. The first game I went to to see the Canes this summer at the 14U level, Fink was on the mound and he's up to 86. It's a quick, clean arm with his frame that we touched upon earlier being so projectable, but then you see him with the bat, and you're like, well, he might be a bat long-term, but then you think again, like, well, he's only 14, and he's up to 86, 87 with a field for a breaking ball. Then you have to reevaluate everything you think, and then you just make it easy and say, well, he's a two-way. Yeah, I mean, he's eventually going to have to make that decision. He's going to have to go one way or the other, but until then, you ride that horse until you don't have to anymore. You can just pick either I'm going to be a hitter or... I'm going to have to run poles every every day for four days and then start. Rylan Galvan with a bat in his hands in the batter's box. As that one misses outside, let's see if we can connect again. Down below with Danny Wexelman. Danny? Flash, I have been lucky enough to see you all summer. So I know you as Flash the broadcaster, know you as Flash the player, but who is Flash the coach? Well, you know what? I, I enjoy this, and this is probably the best thing that I get an opportunity to do is uh, live out a dream, still feeling like a kid in uniform, uh, coaching as well as uh, trying to teach the game that I love so much. So this is a thrill for me, a dream come true, to be a part of these kids' lives, uh, what Perfect Game represents and how they go about it. I I've been around it so much, but also I get a chance to experience it now as a manager. I see you getting in the ears of all these kids. There's, there's always teaching moments. What's been the best part for you this weekend? Well, you know the questions. They ask a lot of questions, and, uh, you know, of course, I try to give them the best answers I can and give them bits and pieces here and there that can help them down the line because, you know, when these kids go back home, they try to put all this together. Uh, the information is so jammed in. At the same time, we don't get an opportunity to spend so much time with them, but just trying to work with them, help them to grow. Uh, as young men, they do a really good job, but like I said, asking the questions and trying to find ways to make themselves better baseball players. When it comes to perfect game, where do you see the future going? Yeah, I, you know what? I, I've been uh, in a lot of talks about the things that are going to happen next. Also, I've been hearing a lot of good things about where the future can be within the next two, three, five years down the line. So, you know, it's really important that we continue to uh, utilize what we know in the game. And, and Perfect Game has been a huge example of what baseball is all about, trying to implicate the new technologies and all the things that are out there. So it's been, it's been great. Uh, I, I see in the next two, three, five years down the line, major things happening in Fort Myers with Perfect Game. Flash, thank you so much as always. Always, Dennis. Appreciate it. <laughs> We're having the best time, guys. Back to you. Outstanding stuff, and you know who's not having the best time? Anyone having to deal with that breaking ball? My goodness, Nathan Fink, that was just unfair. That was absolutely nasty right there. Oh, my goodness. And I'm going back to the dugout. <laughs> he starts with three straight balls on the fastball, blows two by him, then goes to that 3-2. Lands at front door. Great pitch, Ryland Galvan. You can just tip your cap with that one. Nothing you could do about that. Yeah, so well, back to the dugout. That's not even tip your cap because he turned thinking the ball was going to hit him. Cole Young. Rocket shot, base hit right field. Young. It's a sweet swing from Cole Young. Yeah, Leaned on that hit. baseball. USC lead his travel team out of Wexford, Pennsylvania. And Young who's done so many good things this year, including big exit velocity, 14-year national. How's that hit? I mean, like, like it says there, high contact, he knows who he is as a hitter. And he has a feel for the barrel and finds a barrel, which means as he gets stronger, 
he's still going to be able to find the barrel, but it's going to be with more strength. You see the extension out front, loose hands, loose wrists. That's what you want it to look like. And he's on first base because of it. That was a loud noise that came off his bat, too. Here's another lefty bat here with Mikey Romero that knows how to handle the barrel. He does, doesn't he? Sweet oh, swing, base right it into left field. That was pretty. And he obviously let it travel deep into his stance. Romero with the base hit. Back to back singles for Scott Erickson's team. That's a, that's a duel right there. You can see playing up the middle for a while. Left handed swings. No, no, just stays on it. That one with it real well. Keeps the hands back, gets the barrel out, jammed up a little bit, but still, even with his current strength and frame, strong enough to dump it into left field for a single. That was, I mean, that was just overall a great piece of hitting. And and what Darren said, he let the ball get deep. And a lot of times when you hear people say, let the ball get deep, let it travel, nobody says how deep. And that goes all the way back to learning your contact points. And that was the one thing that I was telling some of the hitters. Even though they're advanced, you got to know where you got to hit the ball up the middle, where you pull, and when you're hitting the ball away. And for me, once you know that, you work off the tee to get that swing consistent up the middle, away, and down the middle. And then when you're up there hitting, the ball's going to come in either a fastball or come in a different route with a curveball or have some sort of sinkage, but it's going to cross through your zone. So it's just a matter of you getting the bat to the zone. Well, just like... What Rene just did right there, but he hit that hit one of those atom balls right to the outfielder. Rene Galvan with a line drive, a screamer into right field, leaned on that one, a very pretty swing by the young man out of Sinton, Texas. But Mr. Waters was there to make the play for the out. Just a good first step there from Jeffrey to read the ball off the bat. It very easily could have dropped down for a single and scored another run for Erickson, but instead it results in an out. Breaking ball. Just protecting a protective swing by Hayden Murphy as he fouls that one off. Two outs in the inning, seven to four the score. Mikey Romero followed up Cole Young's base hit with a pretty base hit of his own. San Diego product. Did a really, really nice job with that one, the 0-1. Another big swing and another foul ball. No balls and two strikes to count. We've seen Murphy on the mound now. We've seen him make that play at shortstop. And with the bat, I mean, he checks a lot of boxes throughout. There's definite tools on either side of the ball. Murphy goes down on strikes. Fink cleans things up. A couple of beautiful pieces of hitting by Cole Young and Mikey Romero. Seven to four, the score. We move to what? May be the final half inning in this fun celebration that's been all week long ongoing. The Perfect Game Select Baseball Festival. The gathering of the most talented 14 new players in the land. I think we're going to pause for just a moment. Jovan Gil will say. Ooh. Mm -hmm. 
Jovan Gil in this 7-4 game. Singing God Bless America. He played a couple years ago in this event, correct? A big arm, yeah. Out of, out of Kansas City, Missouri. Now I believe he resides in Florida, up to 91 recently at our underclass All-American event. Just again, like these guys, he just continues to climb on the mound every time. And so we get a look at a left arm, and obviously a, a talented left arm. And Renzo Gonzalez, you were talking about the talented Puerto Rican athlete earlier. He plays on both sides of the baseball, a dangerous outfielder, left-handed pitcher. Tell us about the stuff we'll see from Renzo. Yeah, we saw him up to 87, 88 miles an hour. Obviously, that's good, right-handed or left-handed. Being left-handed is a bonus. Quick, short arm. What stands out for him is a really good changer. The changer mimics very well out of his hand. Tough for hitters to pick up. And obviously, we talked about him earlier with the accolades and the, with the bat. Jeffrey Waters is who he will face first. And in a showcase situation where one pitcher that you know might have taken the opportunity to pitch in Brady House, he's already had his at bats. He's down in the bullpen playing catch, so we'll watch closely to see if we, since this is a showcase and an exhibition, play the bottom of the seventh inning in order to allow the pitcher to do some work. We'll see. Well, Jeremy, I have a question for you pertaining to, you know, scouting. Mm -hmm. Now, do you consider a pitcher with high velocity but can't find the strike zone more of a prospect than a pitcher with, you know, he's more of a crafty guy? And I'm talking about for all ages, um, being more of a prospect than a guy that can get outs and and just kind of move the ball around and keep hitters off, of ba off sure. balance. Yeah, for me, I like seeing, I don't mind a mix of both. I like, if you can't find the zone per se right now at this age or a year or two more, but you have the big arm, you hope that they're going to grow into it. Or if you're a pro team, you're going to buy into your developmental system and say they can fix this by doing this, this, and this. Obviously, we at Perfect Game don't buy into the, uh, the player like that where you're going to put them in a developmental system. But with the, the guys that are touch and feel per se, they're the ones that know how to pitch, and you wait, and the velocity jumps come. So kind of like a hitter that knows how to handle the barrel before they're strong and can drive the ball, it's like a pitcher where they know how to throw strikes, but they don't have the arm strength yet. So they know how to pitch. They know how to sequence and pitch backwards, which a lot of the kids that throw hard early on may not necessarily know the subtle nuances to just yet. That makes a whole lot of sense. So guys out there that not exactly pumping like these young gentlemen here, do not quit. You can teach velocity. Velocity jumps come. Guys get drafted within a year or two. You're seeing another five, six miles an hour added just through arm care, arm strength, and de developmental. Over the outside corner, Gonzalez does some painting, and Jeffrey Waters goes down on strikes. Well, the young hitters have to get used to umpires having, you know, different zones. There are some umpires that are pitchers, umpires that have a they keyhole the pitchers and then you have the umpires that are pitcher umpires that have a friendly zone that give a couple of inches to the inside and to the outside of the plate so when you have an umpire that has a bigger zone as a hitter you have to know to make that adjustment when you're hitting you're making adjustments anyway you have to make adjustments to the umpire as well because the umpire is not going to go oh well i'm sorry that you see that that ball is outside but i see it as a strike you're out Stanford lines that one in the left field and hangs up for a base hit. It'll skip on by. We'll see him hurry on around, touching second. Oh, Thinking going about for third, in the third, with the slide, it's a triple for Stanford. Personality plays. Yes, he's definitely having fun. Look at that smile. Look, he can't stop smiling. Stop smiling. Look at how long his strides are, too. Now once he hits second base, he, he hits another gear once he gets to second base. Yeah, Carrier made that commitment to that ball, and the ball hit that dirt and just skipped on to the wall, and Stanford took full advantage and got those long legs to third base. 
Fastball over the outside corner. Tamar Johnson singled and stole a base in the third inning, walked and scored in the first inning. Stafford, by the way, pitched very effectively, also has a single and a triple in this game tonight. Tamar here, we did our, our diamond kinetic testing earlier in the weekend. With Tamar, he came in the top five in the max barrel speed, and he came in number one for the max acceleration, which means the moment your barrel starts, the point of impact. So that really just speaks to how quickly, how quick his hands are, how fast they are. And while he's not the biggest, he's able to impact the baseball just with how loose his wrists and how fast his hands really are. And that is something that you can't teach right there. You either have quick hands like that or you don't. And obviously, Lil Cano right here has those hands. And his brother, Travell, also has those hands. And he's a right-handed hitter who catches and plays third and outfielders. And, I mean, they're very talented brothers. And I've seen them the last two years, and I'll be seeing Travell next month here in the WWBA underclass tournament. I'm going to be coaching, so I'll be in a different uniform for the Breakthrough Series team coming down to be a part of that event. Looking forward to that just before the big event with the older players in Jupiter. Worldwood Bat Association World Championship. A mile high, good communication. He knew he just missed that pitch because he put a real good swing on it. Sal Stewart puts that one away. Scott Erickson making sure that all of his pitchers get an opportunity to work. Gonzalez does a nice job. And opens things up. Boy, Scott's having fun. His team has had swagger. He's been with these kids 24-7. A nice job heading off the diamond there by Gonzalez. And it's a chance to work for Luke Davis. Talked about Davis earlier when he was catching. He's out of Garden Grove, California. CBA, his travel team, California Baseball Academy. Cypress High School, he's the youngest of four. And Davis, the catcher, aware of. He's been a pretty fast mover. Davis, the pitcher? Yeah, it's, uh, he's up to 88. Good breaking ball. You can already see the arm quickness after one warm up pitch. He, he just does it all. He hasn't defined himself into one role yet. Obviously, switch hitter, catcher, plays shortstop, can pitch. Does it all. Looking for a new ball, though, here. There you see the all-around scouting report on who he is as a catcher and the catch and throw skills behind the plate. We were telling you earlier that Luke Davis recently committed to USC. How about the evolution with recruiting and how the communication with the younger players has evolved over the last couple of years? How does it affect the next couple of years for these athletes with regard to college coaches, with regard to being in touch with the athletes? What are the new regulations? Yeah, it, the, I mean, the process got so expedited that kids were committing, obviously, in eighth grade, as we have a couple of them here. Now with the new rules, they can't. Coaches can't call con call them, contact them until September 1st. No official visits prior till then. No unofficial visits either. I believe is September a new thing. 1st of what year? Their junior year. Okay. So a couple of the guys that came back got a lot of phone calls. Some of the alum that came back that haven't been committed yet, and it's been a nonstop phone call after phone call for them. But they're just trying to protect the young athletes in terms of getting bombarded by college coaches, but we're still seeing the commitments via camps and prior relationships with the coaches. Andrew Jones. Davis with some good sink on that fastball. First pitch, 84 miles an hour. Actually closer to 86 according to the Trackman data out there in right field. So there's some life in that arm. 2-0 and the count. you got to figure he's caught a couple innings already, so you can add another tick or two just if he was fresh coming out on the mound starting the game. So lots of arm strength, lots of arm quickness, lots of talent for Luke Davis. 
So you're saying, in other words, whatever he's putting up right now, because he's caught earlier, that probably took a couple of ticks off of just, his velo. Just natural wear and tear throughout the weekend. Not necessarily, but knowing what we have seen him earlier this summer, just the end of a long summer for him, traveling coast to coast. And truthfully, it's only 950 from where he's from, so he should be fine. Good fastball right down off the end of the bat. That actually 85 miles an hour according to track band. So just a little bit above what we're seeing over the last few pitches. The two have been aligned most of the night. It's certainly important to point out for these pitchers and the numbers they're touching. Cypress High School. It was 84 to 89 as a pitcher in the 15U Perfect Game World Series this summer. Blew it right by him in tight, 86 miles an hour. And that will do it. Team Erickson, the champions of this year's Perfect Game Select Baseball Festival. All right, my choice. <laughs> Scott Erickson squad. That's great. Had the devices out, the videos going, smartphones and all week long, these athletes have benefited from the teaching and the coaching of Flash Gordon and Scott Erickson, you, Dimitri, spending time with all of them. Got to do that, right? Oh, have, have to. to. What an experience. And look at those, those faces right there. That is sheer joy. get down there in a minute and enjoy some of this celebration so look bottom line you parents out there step parents that are a part of the journey for these athletes a lot to celebrate because the way these young men handled themselves in Fort Myers Florida over the last three or four days has just been incredible classy to those that they're around they treat one another with respect and certainly this sport too Danny Wexelman down below standing by. There has been all sorts of talented efforts out there, but I'm going to say that something special, Danny, about what Riley Stanford did. That's right, guys. I've got Joel Perez Jr. here with Riley Stanford, our MVP. Joel, you're going to present the trophy to Riley. Go ahead for that. Let's take a look at this. Riley, congratulations. Uh, Ma'am? <laughs> I just said congratulations to you. Oh, uh, thank you. It's a great honor to have this heavy thing right here. <laughs> it is It is heavy, guys. And, Riley, you got it done on the mound. You got it done on the base paths. You just legged out that triple. Flash Gordon was laughing because he loved your effort. He loved how much you're contributing to this game. What do you have to say about that? I just give 100%, 100% of the time, and that's, that's my that's my game right there and that's that's what I'll continue to do and hopefully do it in the future you've had a pretty cool weekend here perfect game festival what's this experience been like you've been with the best in the country oh it's amazing I'm with the best players and not only are the best players there's the best people and the best coaches here also not only have they taught me to be a better baseball player but they're they also taught me how to be a better person in general Riley thank you so much congratulations thank you guys back to you Riley stand for the MVP and he's about to oh, they, they missed him with the bath and he held on to the trophy yeah he held on I saw all that coming together oh they got him on the backside there but he go. still held on to the trophy 15 20 seconds or so my friend take away from what you saw this week I saw absolutely the best young talent out there and not only the talent shine but who they are as people shine going to the hospital and and being able to communicate with them about who they are and who they're going to become. And it's nothing but blue skies for these young guys, provided that they work hard and continue on their track. The 21 and 22 draft class, when we look ahead to the future, what do you see? A bright one. There's a lot of talent both sides of the ball all over the country. Obviously, we got a couple guys for 2020 with the international signs, but it's a bright future for the game of baseball, and I'm excited we got to hang around with them all weekend. Danny Wexelman doing a great job down on the field as well. Her thoughts and her insights throughout this week, speaking at the banquet last night to these players and providing insights from the dugout. Well, that'll do it. Here from JetBlue Park, this gorgeous, gorgeous ballpark in Fort Myers, Florida, well past midnight, but it was worth it. The rain really never went away, but once it did, we were dancing with these ball players out there. 
Dimitri Young love talking baseball with the hit king Dimitri Young and all that he provides Jeremy Brown and his scouting insights and Danny Wexelman representing Major League Baseball and our entire crew. I'm Darren Sutton. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports.